All right, you guys. Hello, everyone. We're back doing the same thing again. I'm playing the nine ball god, race to 21. We have Collins, the post up, Newey, and JD, the Jason Sword, in the booth commentating. Should be fun. What do you think, guys? Do I have a chance? No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what do you think, Jason? <laughs> I'm giving you a 0% chance. Just about 0%. You got a tough table over there. Have you played on that table? It's uh, it's have a good Have a good steak horse. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, four four inch uh, pockets on the corners and four and a quarter on the side pockets. So it's uh, it's a tough table, but still plays a little bit easier than it should because it's brand new. They just recovered the top of the – they just switched the top of the table last month. So uh, it's a little bit more forgiving for now, but in a month or two, it's going to be a, a tough table to play on. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm excited to see what you're uh, what you're capable of. I mean, obviously, you have you wouldn't set this up without thinking that you're not going to play good. So I, I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's just a good practice for me. It's just a good practice for me. I, I personally think that I'm a big, big underdog. I have to break perfect. The whole set and make the ball every time i mean if every time i break dry i'm gonna lose and uh every time i'm gonna break and be hooked i'm gonna be losing like 90 percent of these games maybe more so i have to be breaking good be lucky with the layouts and uh not miss balls have, have you ever played the god like in practice and and done quite well no i actually played twice or three times with this rules i used to play a lot when we practiced one on the spot with the magic right because that's the game where you actually had to break and run almost every time you had a chance but with that format the last time i played probably was uh, uh when we did the stream the last time gotcha gotcha well um yeah, Jason, if you're watching that stream, he's actually clicking his phone right now because it went a little blurry. Hopefully, when when Fetter walks out there, the camera will refocus on him. But uh, oh, okay, yeah, so was uh, I think it's just a focusing issue on the on the camera. Yeah, it should should resolve itself. So, uh, but yeah, Jason's gonna be hanging out with me on the mic. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about the game um, when things get real interesting. But I also want to get to know Jason a little bit. But uh, I think we're gonna have some fun. Uh, I will be playing a little bit of music because the room echoes a little bit. It'll cover up a little bit of that, that echo. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be cool to see see what Fetter can do here. Good luck, buddy. All righty. Yeah, let's let's jump in. Good luck to me. All right. Good luck. You're going to need it. Yeah. yeah here we well. go. So let me click a few buttons here and get the audio yeah. levels right. <clears throat> And we should be good to go here. Oh, let me get Skype back up over here. There we go. Yeah, if you see that that, that table in the background there, Collins, that's his uh, that's Fetter's trophy case. Oh, no kidding. Okay. He hasn't added any any hardware to it as of late. I guess Turning Stone, but he was in in a little slump before Turning Stone. wasn't yeah. able to to uh, travel to all the major events but they they did have a, he's gonna get a back trophy there it. though right they gave him a trophy right i haven't i haven't seen the turning stone trophy i've never sure. seen it either yeah that's why i asked i don't i didn't know if they actually had one because i know here at hard times we have a probably about two or three really big events every year uh we actually don't give out any trophies we just give out a bunch of cash so yeah cash is oh, always better than know. trophies we're good we're good yeah we cool good um, another note for future streams, Jason, if there's a way for you to pull up the, the chat from the stream that I have going up, like on Fetter's channel, uh, yeah. if there's a way for you to pull up an extra window so you can read that chat live, that, that way, if anybody has any pertinent questions that you want to respond to, um, that could be useful as well. First break, the one goes down. And he has a shot. Here we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is as this is as good as it's gonna get on this table. I mean, I'm telling you, this this table's so tight that I'll hit a couple balls on it and just put the cue up. I mean, it is it is really tight. I know he says that it's it's forgiving, but it is a very tough table. Well, I I can't believe that, you know, the whole. No, I think it's good for the game that that Matchroom has been having all their tables essentially cut like this, right? And that's super tough. I've we have a diamond table here at Hard Times, table one. I hate playing on it because it's the corner pockets. Some of them are a little bit gaffy because they're they're somewhere between four and four and an eighth. But the way that they're cut at four and an eighth makes them a little ridiculous, you know. Uh, but a four-inch diamond table is like super tough. Yeah, and this this came straight from the factory. So where we live is about 10 minutes from the diamond factory. Um, their number one table mechanic came out and installed it for him. Obviously, he's sponsored by Diamond, so they want him to be able to uh, to win some of these big events. So they they put the gray cloth and and made him a special top, just like they're making for matching. But you know, obviously, it's going to play a little tougher than what it will at, at say, like a Moscone Cup or whatever, because it doesn't have all the lights. Right. Um, but this is 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 fairly new. I mean, they haven't played much on it. It has been it's gotten a little bit of play, but they did just clean the balls, so that helps the balls um, go down a little bit smoother for him. But also will help him draw on the ball. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot of shots that that you got to guess when it's super slick like that. Right. With polished balls, I mean, it, at least for me, it's guessing. I know it's not a lot for him. That's the reason why he plays such good angles and this cue ball's so good. But still, very very tough. You have to hit the ball perfect for it to for it to go down. Right. <clears throat> and one 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 other thing, uh, Collins. I'm not sure if a lot of people are aware of this, but um, at, before before they made these uh, adjustments to the tops all diamond side pockets used to be four and a half inches no matter what the corners were okay. so their their machines used to even if you got four and a quarter so i've had a couple four and a quarter inch pockets um and four and an eighth but the side pockets were always bigger um but now fetter said these side pockets are four and a quarter so interesting first rack goes to the ghost Better Gorst. <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> That's what they all call him. I don't know. I, I, we gotta find him a nickname. Call yeah, him. yeah. I don't. I don't like the ghost because it's a little. It's uh, we get what you're trying to do, you know, but because Gorst is real close. But but uh, eh, anyway, we'll we'll see what we find. Hey, someone in the chat asked, "Does anybody know the nine ball gods Fargo rate?" I'll tell you what. If Federer wins this match, Hill Hill, it's about eight thirty three. <laughs> if not, it's about infinite. I'll be right back, Collins. I'm gonna oh, grab yeah. my other phone so I can so I can view the chat. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, right on. Right, right on. Yeah. <clears throat> another decent break. Ooh, another decent break. Six oh, balls yeah, a little sweet. nasty. Six balls a little nasty right here, though. Yeah, but that close to the two with a playable ball, it's probably going to be looking for an opportunity to kind of run into the to the six. So we'll see if he can. If he, well, he's got the. It's pretty tough. It's just really tough. Pretty for, tough for having an open layout, an open layout, quote unquote. This is about as tough as it gets. And I was just looking to see. I mean, it, it's it's a playable ball, though, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it's far enough down, like away from the side pocket, that you can you can access the ball. And if you have to go across the table and back, you can. No one likes doing that. Uh, but obviously, this shot right here is huge. <laughs> but that's certainly what he's going to do here, right? I mean, he's he's almost forced to go back and forth. The good news is he doesn't have any balls below the side pocket. So he can he can cue with some high English um, and, and get some nice shape here. Yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah. He, he puts his finger down like he was trying to get three inches further, but we we all knew that he'd be shooting this shot like ninety percent of the time. 
the the good news yeah. actually is if the three if the sorry if the six is frozen to the rail he can play it with an inside ball right which clears the side pocket for the scratch yeah and i kind of feel like that's what he's gonna have to do it's all about this shot isn't it yeah this table man this table will punish that shot you, you literally have to hit it perfect there's zero margin for error. Mark um, Mark Wilson talks about how at the highest level of the game, the pros have a margin for error in their stroke on average that is about half the thickness of a dime. That shot is less than that. You, you literally have no margin for error on this table. That's tough. Yeah, that's, I mean, anytime you have to hit it with that kind of speed up the rail, it's, it's not going to work out in your favor. So, we'll see. One to one. He hey, he can at least say he had the lead at some point. Hey, he might get it back. I like his well, chances. If he, keeps, if he keeps breaking like that, I mean, listen, he could run away that, with it. Yeah, that was a great. Like the that. last two breaks were like fantastic. He got unlucky with the six ball in the last one. Where is this? Lucky Cousins asks Jason. Why don't you tell him? What is it? Where, where, where is, is it? this? Yeah, where is this taking place? Uh, yeah, so it's Memphis, Indiana. He's just north, just right outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Might as well call it Louisville, Kentucky. About 15 minutes from downtown Louisville. So, got a nice, tough shot here, Collins. Throws into the rail. Doesn't pass the, uh, the two doesn't pass the five. He's going to have to cut no, this ball in. And come up two rails in between the five seven and yeah. what he's looking at there yeah so he's gonna have to move a lot here right, i'm trying to grab this chat so i can follow with you guys oh what a shot <laughs> Yeah, that one was pretty nice. That was I thought he was nice. going to try to go in between the 5-7. He just went underneath the 7. Pretty that was, smooth shot there. That shot is reminiscent of when when I see this guy warming up for, you know, I, I actually, especially when I stream some of his tournament matches, I get to see a lot of him warming up because he sets up the live stream to me really early. But one of his, oh, we, we jinxed him right there. We just, we threw the hate on him. That's crazy. That I was going to say, though. Shot. But those 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 shots on this table when you're when you're trying to hit them soft like that to hold, I mean any any regular diamond that ball falls right. But right at that angle, it, it almost needs a little speed. Right. But yeah, he's uh he's become quite the player. Um. Oh, the thing I was gonna say though is when he's warming up for these other events, when I when I'm watching him do his warm ups, he'll like. You know, just like anyone, he'll throw the nine balls out on the table and he'll be running them out. But anytime he has a shot where he just knows it's easy to make the ball and get on the next ball, he'll like take ball in hand to make the shot tough and then get on the next ball. And and if he gets perfect on the next ball, he'll take ball in hand to make the shot tough again. He's a psychopath. Yeah, he's definitely that. Right. And the fourth rack, he's trailing two to one to the god. He's breaking the one in the side perfect. I'll every tell you time one thing, so far. He's, he's, pre he's breaking pretty daggone good. I mean, that's the thing. He He's definitely an underdog in this game on this table. But if he's breaking good, he could run away with it. It's one of those things. But right. I would probably set the god a five to seven game favorite in this. In Only this five to seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, if, if it was five, I'd bet on the God. If it was seven, probably be a no bet for me. So that's probably the fair line, I would think. Um, somewhere in the middle of that. So that's Federer at 14. Federer 14. 14 break and runs out of, you know, 35, 37-ish. No, 38. I can't math right now. I give up. And a similar shot here. He's gonna he's gonna run away with this one. Gotta yeah. have it.
So, Jason, I, I know I know I heard on, I think it was the Joe Rogan podcast, or, or maybe it was somewhere else. Maybe I asked him when he was here in the booth last two years ago or whatever for the Brendan Crockett, or last year. How, how did you two meet? Um, so, yeah, interesting story, actually. At the time, um, we were at the Derby City Classic, and he was, I believe he was 15. And at the time, I was taking uh, Skylar Woodward, and we were deep. We were deep into the tournament. I want to say it was like the, the final 16 Derby City Classic nine ball. Um, and, you know, at the, at the time, we draw somebody that deep. You know, at, at Derby City, it's just a random draw. There's no bracket or anything. So you have to wait for the round to, to get announced. Uh, this is, this right. is the shot here. So you got to wait for the round to, announce, to get announced to see who you play. So um, we draw Fetter Gorst. And I'm like, who the hell's Fetter Gorst? And me and Skyler looked at each other and we said, I don't know. But good thing. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, know yeah. Who, if I don't know who the, the guy is, 16, he can't play, yeah, right? Yeah. The final 16, I don't know who he is, but it's, it's got to be a good thing. I mean, you're going down the list. It's Dennis Urkulo, Alex Paguline, you know, all these, all the great players. Um, and then we get there and it's just this goofy, tall, lanky, you know, Russian kid. And I'm like, what the hell? Um... And anyway, long, long, long story short, um, Fetter played a perfect set. I mean, Skyler missed a grand total of zero balls, lost nine to one. And, and this kid just kind of was slinking around the table, just running out from everywhere. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Who are these Russian kids? Because right. um, the same exact derby tournament, Fetter had played Skyler. I mean, Skyler had played the the other billiard brothers in one pocket in Banks and lost to them too. So, uh, Fetter was the final one, but to me, was the most impressive. And then the next year, Fetter came back to Derby. He um, was betting on himself with me in the Bigfoot Challenge. He kept coming up to me after every, before every one of his matches, and he was wanting to bet five hundred on himself. And I'm like, this kid's got some heart. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, and he kept winning. He actually lost in the finals that year, uh, I believe, to Roberto Gomez. Um, but he bet on he, he busted me. It was the only bets I lost for like five years at Derby City Classic was to Fetter Gore's betting on himself. So I'm like, all right, I gotta I, I gotta get to know this kid. So we started messaging a little bit on Facebook, and then he was trying to get over to America. Um, so so I brought him over, and um, you know the rest has been history. Yeah, and. I mean, he was he was a, a, a good player then, unbelievable talent. But the most important thing to me was his work ethic was unbelievable. It, his, his work ethic is unmatched in pool. Let me just say that. But not only that, this is the most important thing, Collins, to me. Okay. His ability to understand the game so quickly, because when he, you know, he he had just kind of watched YouTube videos like like our viewers out here are. To, to pick up on banks, to pick up on these games that come over and play the Derby City Classic. And then, you know, we started kind of working through the progressions of um, one pocket. First, we started off getting out of the break. We started off with, you know, just kind of situations, ball count, when to push them up table, when to keep them in play, mm -hmm. when to shoot for shots, when not to shoot for shots, just different situations. And he's like a sponge. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable to me. And, and it's kind of funny because it was, it was, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even know. It just became after a very short period of time, there was nothing left for me to do. I mean, just sit back and, and watch and enjoy what he does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just, to me, it's just um, the most amazing thing to watch. That kind of shot um, right there, the way, the way Fetter and some of these other guys at, at this level hit that shot. It's just so it's so unbelievable to me how effortless they make it look because, again, the the margin for error that you have when you're putting your cue through that cue ball on a punch shot like that, it's almost non-existent, and they hit it like it's a hanger. Yeah. I mean, there's just – for him, there's just so many hours, and there's so many different drills that he did. Um, you know, I will say this. He, he, he doesn't practice as often now um, as he did, but – you know, obviously with a lot of travel and, and a lot of different things, a lot of it's about kind of resting and resetting and rebooting for him now because he's just put so many hours in and has so much knowledge. 
of, of every shot. I mean, it, it really is amazing to see somebody with this much knowledge at this age. Yeah. With, you know, the... the he's, he's 23 now or 24? 20, 23, yeah. 23, yeah. So. It's unbelievable. And, and the way he carries himself. I've said this every time anyone's brought it up, how, how nice of a guy he is and how well-spoken he is. But just the way he carries himself, too, for 23, it's, it's unreal. So... Yeah, and you know, very humble too. Yeah. Um, but that's that's like one of the one of the things that we've always talked about myself and Feather Feather is here we are we're we're in the pool world right like as far as as far as being famous in the pool world he, he's extremely famous. Yeah. But if but if you if you go to Louisville Kentucky and walk into a random Walmart and nobody knows who you are, you're right. not famous. Right, right, right. And 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 that's what I that's what I I've tried telling him just over and over. Don't let this stuff go to your head because you're gonna go into pool halls and you're gonna go into these places and they're gonna make you think that you're famous and it can go to your head. You can stop working, you can start acting like a different person. And um, just doing things different in your life, and and become a completely different individual than what you actually should be. And you know, for me, I, I watch him. He 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 acts like a normal guy. Um, yeah. Just a normal person. I mean, he went on Joe Rogan and, and kind of blew up a little bit. His channel's doing great. Thanks to you for helping and and, and oh, everybody sure. out there watching. I mean, I mean, honestly, if you if you look at somebody that's trying to build something and pull, it's that's, better. That's the thing dude about this guy is he's not only like obsessed with the game but he's he knows it's such a good game that he's trying to do what he can to help other people see how good it is that aren't necessarily like you and I or like people that have been you know kind of uh, like sucked into the game for so long or whatever you know it's like it's really cool that he's uh, trying to make his mark yeah yeah Knocks down the, he made a few balls there. Knocks down the deuce here. He's going to be running. He's ahead three to two right yeah, now, right? Yeah, it's his second lead in the match. Yeah, and, and you know, listen, not to not to knock anybody in pool, but if you look around it, and most of the superstars in pool, you know, they're they're usually built to kind of handle pressure, which usually means that they're not the brightest, they're not the sharpest, the smartest I think I see what players. You're saying. Yeah, yeah. The smartest players, what I've learned, the smartest players in pool usually dog it. Yeah, they're yeah. smart, they're intelligent, they may be very good, but when the when the time comes for them to come with it under pressure, they know they all the things it. that can go wrong. <laughs> right. right. So they overthink it and they do those things. So the top top elite players, and you know, it's I'm not I'm not saying that they're dumb or anything like that, no. but they're not the most intelligent people. If you took them out of pool. And you put them into any other bit, you know, into a business world, or you put them into any other setting. Most of them are not going to be the most successful. Um, but the one thing that I've always said is, if Feder doesn't want to play pool, he will be successful in, in business. Whatever he's and doing, guarantee, yeah. And guarantee, just guarantee he'll be he'll be successful in business as he's well. Super smart, yeah. Um, well, his, his his dedication and his discipline is is. Um, you know, obviously, you can be extremely disciplined if you're not that intelligent. You may struggle in business, but if you're intelligent and disciplined, like like mm -hmm. Feder, you're going to be successful. So, if he, you know, if it wasn't pool, it'd be something else that he'd be a superstar at. And I, I firmly believe that. Yeah, that was a great shot right there. That little combo that he he ends up with an angle that's uh, it looks like it's probably cheatable to to get to the seven ball. Yeah. Yeah, you can just come two rails side here. Pocket, I believe. Side pocket, side pocket rail. Right. This is no good. Ooh. This is no good. Head straight, huh? Uh, I think he has a very, very, very slight angle towards the eight, but it's not good enough. And it doesn't really matter, though, because the, the eight passes the nine, you know, if he's got a... He might even be able to cheat it and get... Or not cheat it, but use that very slight angle to go forwards, maybe. But then he has to punch it forward two to three rails to get anywhere good on the eight. It's really tough. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to jack up here. No. <laughs> He's going to try to punch, like you said. Oh, Great wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, this is the moment where when I make a shot like that, I'll definitely dog the eight because I know how good that shot was. <laughs> and then well, this, I forget. This to isn't not... a hanger. Yeah, I know. No yeah, here. exactly. Yeah, I'll forget. 
that you got to just get down and make the next ball, you know? Oh, he did it too. Yeah, exactly. David Collins. Yeah. Gave it to the God. Three to three. He gave it the to score. the God. Hey, Jason, All I actually got to gotta step out for a, a quick moment. I actually got to use Albano. I'll be right back. I'll leave All you right. alone. Webcam button right there. Yeah, don't don't take the webcam with you, please. No, 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 never. <laughs> Why is it not turning off though? Hold on. There we go. All right. After six racks, all even here. You're just now tuning in. This is Jason Sword watching Fetter Gorse play the God. And if you're not aware of what the God is, if you're new out there, he is playing nine ball, and he's spotting the nine on the spot. So if you've been watching any matchroom events, any uh, it's the same exact format. So there's a break box. So he has to break from the from the middle of the table. What he's trying to do is he's trying to make the one ball on the side. Um, and he does not get ball in hand. He does not get anything. He has to just play from the break. If he misses a ball on the break, he loses the rack. And if he doesn't successfully run all nine balls after the break, he loses the rack. So that's the god. Basically, he has to break and run every single rack to win. And he's racing to 21. And it looks like he's got a decent look at the at the two ball here, but he's going to be stretched out. So it may be a little tough. Got some congestion up there in the top right corner. A lot of work to do. looking at now how to how to draw and bump off the six ball so he's trying to he's trying to draw in between the eight nine go down and hit the six to be able to manufacture a shot on the three in the side this is tough especially the way he's going to be extended out what he's looking at here is, is going in and flicking the top of that five ball All he has to do is hit the two ball first. If he makes any other ball, he gets to keep shooting. Just got to hit the, the lowest ball first. Oh, and he got a little kiss there. I believe he's got a shot. Better will be headed to New York to play in one more matchroom ranking event before the U.S. Open. U.S. Open in a few weeks in Atlantic City. Better really looking forward to that. Trying to claim his first U.S. Open title this year. Also trying to get on the Moscone Cup. I believe he's second in points right now, or, or earnings. Be selected for Team Europe. going to stay under the six there. I was wondering. I don't think it bounced up as much as he wanted to. I think he wanted to come up a little bit. He's a little short there. Now he may have to work the cue ball around. He's got a little bit too much angle here. He's going to have to work it around a few rails. How we doing? What's the update? Uh, he's still running out. He's made a couple nice shots. And we'll see if the eight ball to that corner pocket will get him again. Uh, I think he's going to do it this time. How dare you? How dare you say you, something like that? Collins, I was going to ask you if it was number one or number two, but uh, <laughs> as, quick, as quick as you were, I think you answered that for me. <laughs> well, I mean... If I'm going to be honest, I'm taking a break from my break. If you're a, a post-up uh, enthusiast, then you know I'm taking a little break from the beer. But this weekend, I'm on I'm on a hall pass. 
Oh, all right. So the floodgates are open. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Fetter up four to three, taking his what is that the the third lead, fourth yeah. lead. It's been one and one every single time so far. He's been breaking great. Yeah, he's had. I mean, he's had all seven racks. He's had a shot at the two ball. Yeah, he's made the he successfully made the one ball all seven breaks. Yeah, and he's had a, a an offensive shot at the two ball every time. Yeah. Speaking oh. of post up enthusiasts, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a moment to say hi to a few people. Jennifer Rabbit, good to see you in the chat. Richards World Traveler, GWN, uh, good to see you guys. Endless Supra, thanks for swinging by. And Ike, can't forget Ike. <laughs> He's roasting me because I spilled in the booth yesterday. <laughs> On Friday night, I think it was. Yeah, Nate Tam was in the booth with me, and I got a little too excited. <laughs> Good break again. Yeah, this is a nice one here, if the, especially if the purple passes the green, and I think it does. Yeah, Shannon asked you in the to chat, see. too. Good to see you. And uh, someone just asked, is Russia technically Europe? I think in well, in the context of the Moscone Cup, I believe so, yes. Yes. Four ball passes the six, almost certainly. Very, yeah, I, th I believe so. It does look like it. Very little angle <clears throat> here, so he's going to play short side, it looks like. Yeah. It's going to be tough here. And if you're a Fetter fan, you definitely want to go out and check out FetterGorse.com. Oh, yeah, get, that's right. Yeah, maybe maybe pin that in the chat and go out and check out FetterGorse.com. It'll, it'll show you his next five tournaments. So he is going to the racks in New York City from the 14th to the 17th of this month. Then, obviously, he'll be traveling, traveling up to the Predator Michigan Open from the 20th to the 24th, followed by the... Uh, most famous U.S. Open in Atlantic City. Are you are you going to any of those tournaments, Colin? Uh, I am going to be at the U.S. Open for the first three days. I can't miss too much of work, but I'm going to come out there and hang out for a bit. Nice. So uh, let me. I'm actually going to pin his website. No, that's not the right link. I'm going to pin his website in the chat here for any of those that want to take a look. That'll take just a second, and then. Uh, We'll definitely, in between racks in the future, we can show a few things about the, the tournaments that he's going to be attending. Yeah, and you definitely want to want to check out his website. He also has a shop on there, so he has autographed cue balls that you can buy, and then also some autographed photos, which is pretty cool. And he'll personalize them for you. He spends a lot of time at uh, going to the UPS or the, the USPS store. So this is the link to that shop, actually. And let me see if I can pin that. There we go. This biggest lead yet. Five to, Five three. to three. Things are looking good. I mean, not to yeah. not to put the kibosh well, on it, but things are looking really good i'll tell you what if he breaks like this he's got a shot of winning the u.s open no ch no doubt about it yeah and let me see if i can pull up a few of these graphics in a second here On the ninth rack, it's going a little slower than what he had anticipated. Boom. There's just an example for those of you watching at home of the uh, signed ball, federgorse.com. Yeah, and if you if you uh, are out there watching the video and you're not subscri subscribed to Fetter, make sure you do so. You know, this is a crazy thing about YouTube and, uh, well, just platforms like that in general. Like, on my channel, and I have access to, to Fetter's analytics as well, it's very similar percentages. Like, 
seventy percent of the people who watch on average aren't subscribed. Well, What's going you, on with those thumbs, college. guys? Smash the subscribe those... button because Feder is always going live at all these big tournaments that he goes to. Um, and you want to get notified if you want to watch him live. I, I think he, he just went live playing Lee Van last week, right? That was yeah, an awesome match. That was a great match. That was so fun to watch. Holy crap. I couldn't believe that Upstate Al didn't grab it. That was just an unbelievable match to, to not have on the stream. Well, well, the, here's the, the, major stream. the Inception type comment about that whole thing is if it was on Upstate Al's stream, would it have gone exactly the same way? There's no way that we would know. But I don't the way, think it would have. The way it turned out was super compelling and very entertaining to watch. Yeah, it was a great match. Well, you know, he, he had a couple of nice matches turning stone, which, I, you know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of the event. Um, I don't really like racking for each other. I, I, okay, I, I was about just, to ask, yeah. I think it just leaves, you know, too many things up for argument. Sure. Um, you know, I mean... I, I, I personally like the referee rack. He's going for the contact here. He, he had no to, shot right? on the four. Yeah, I thought maybe it would have passed into the corner, but he, he hits it, and now hmm. he's got to bring that one pocket prowess in unless his ball's cuttable, which is super tough. But... Yeah, he may be able to bank it, right? Yeah. The side pocket, it does pass the six, yeah. The cue ball looks like, yeah, he can take the long shot on the five ball. And that makes the pocket bigger for the four because he doesn't have to, like, fire it in. He can roll the cue ball through. Um, but obviously here, if, if he makes this shot, then... Going long. He made the ball. Great shot. Yeah. He's not out of the woods yet. The good news is the six ball is laying over the side, so he doesn't have to do a whole lot. And if you know Fetter, he does not like to slow roll balls, so this will allow him to kind of get through his stroke here. He can he can he can get through this ball, I believe. Carry some some shape. I think he's liking shooting the six up in the corner and and rolling it a bit. Ugh. Must be the only option, but looks like to me he could just use a high ball here and just and, and just follow through it, kind of take his medicine, just make sure you knock this down. But you're right, yeah. he's slow rolling it. Yeah, he little cinch stroke, said. little cinch stroke. Now that the pocket gets real small on a shot like this, yeah, unless you hit I it real the, soft. But I guess the five wasn't as tough as it looked on the on the table. Yeah. It looked like it was a little bit tougher. Yeah, I've got that. Uh, I've got the edge. I, I've watched an ungodly amount of pool from this angle. <laughs> this is the shot here. He's a five to two, right? Or five to three? Five to three, yeah. Line no shot on makes table. it. Hits it just perfect. He's out of the woods. We're getting a little bit of laggy jumpiness from the stream. Hopefully it'll resolve itself. Uh, I mean, obviously we can see what's happening with each shot. If it doesn't resolve itself, what I'll end up doing is just pausing the stream for about five, 10 seconds, and then uh, letting the buffer happen before we watch it. And six to three's the score. Six to three in the lead. <laughs> what a fantastic out. That yeah, was nice. Dumping the nine ball, getting getting a bank on the purple. And then chinning it in the side. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. All right, rack number 10. And it looks like the stream has smoothed out a little bit. That's nice. I'll tell you what, we were all sitting around watching football earlier. Who, what game were you watching? We were watching the red zone. Oh, okay. 
um, but we, we had the, the Colts game on, and, and then also we were watching the tennis after that um, on another TV, but everybody was giving Federer a bunch of crap, saying they wanted to bet on the God. Uh-huh. <laughs> Can you blame him? The guy plays perfect. <laughs> yeah, but he could have he could have made a score. Does he have a look at the two here? He does. It goes. Oh, I think it's perfect, too. Yeah, I mean, to he's roll the perfect through. angle. Yeah. Who is the nine ball god? Big Monkey 87 asks. The nine ball god doesn't know how to break, but he also doesn't know how to miss, even if he's dead hooked and pinned to the back of a ball. So if you, it's basically the ghost with no ball in hand. You must break and run or lose. And Fetter's doing yeah. it on four inch pockets right now. And winning. And winning so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little stun run through. He is breaking like King Kong right now. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, his break has actually been having. I think he's had a shot on the two ball for nine straight racks, ten straight racks, right? Yeah, yeah, ten. He's had ten perfect breaks. Um, he missed the eight ball up in the corner. Um, I'm trying to think of the three games he lost. <clears throat> he missed a, a, a makeable eight ball. And he missed a makeable uh, six ball, I think, at some point. Yeah, I can't really remember the other game. I can't remember. He looks the other like one. he's starting to find it. I'll tell you what, he's been breaking really, really well, but the layouts have not been the easiest. No. Definitely Which that is good. last one was was uh, some supreme shot making in that last one. Are you no, getting, he is, Jason? Are he's you getting not the? Gonna, are you getting the What's slight that? laggy jumpiness in your stream, or is it coming through uh, pretty, pretty clean? It's coming through pretty clean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just started smoothing out for me again. But yeah, he is not patter racking. You're right, I can see that. Um, uh, I see that comment there. He he made that clear before the before the match that he was not going to patter rack, which. If you're new to pool out there, pattern racking is racking the balls in the same position over and over, so you have the same layout. Right. So he is not doing that. He's just Good randomly Lord. placing the balls in. Just crushing them. Seven to three. Love from Trinidad. Hey, thanks for tuning in out in Trinidad. So do you usually travel with Fetter or do you, uh, is, does it depend on the event? Uh, so I used to, uh, a lot, a lot more, uh, when he first came over, I spent a lot of time on the road with Fetter. Um, you know, but I, I now have, uh, two children. So I have a nine year old and a three year old and the, and the three year olds kind of slowed me down. Yeah. That's from really cool. Hitting the road as often. Um, so it's like the most worthy reason <laughs> that could exist. Yeah. That's awesome. It might be the only reason that could keep me from going to a couple tournaments, but uh, um, you know the, the biggest ones. I, I obviously I live very close to the Derby City Classic, so uh -huh. I don't miss a day of that. Um, you know I, I try to make it to every single one of Fetter's matches. Based on his body language, he doesn't yeah. like the shot on the deuce. Well, this oh, he is doesn't really hit, have hit a shot. Notes. Yeah. Yeah, he's just gonna have to. He's just gonna have to hit this as hard as he can into the eight ball and try to get some stuff moving and get lucky. But yeah, so I go to the Derby City Classic. I try to um, get to the U.S. Open, uh, which I plan to this year, and then the International Open. So I usually get to to maybe one tournament in Vegas a year. Try to, so I go to you know the biggest ones with him. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, if I bump into you out there, it'd be nice to shake your hand. I think it's awesome what you've done for the game with. Uh, you know, multiple multiple players at this point. What what other players have you really gotten behind in the past? You, you said so, Woodward. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was with Skyler for for quite some time, um, and then obviously Justin Bergman as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and and to Are be you honest, still in with contact you, with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you Bergman's talk? He's a great guy. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of that guy's game. 
Well, I'll tell you what, man. If anybody anybody's out there and you, and you want to learn the right way, uh, hit and hope did not work for nope. better. But if you want to learn the the proper way to play pool, for you know, for anybody that is is a normal human being, like to, if you want to play pool like Feather, you're going to spend a ton of hours becoming a robot. But if you just want to learn the absolute proper way to play pool, go watch Justin Bergman. There's nobody that plays the game um, more natural and has a better understanding of things than him. And and the one thing is, I used to always say this. Five years ago, this is, you know, obviously the game is at a complete different level now. Yeah. I can't believe the way that the game has progressed over the last five years. But I used to always say five years ago, life or death situation and open layout. I'm picking Justin Bergman every time. There's nobody else in the world that I'm going to pick to run out over him. Um, you know, obviously now that everybody shoots so straight, and there's, there's people that pocket balls better than him. But just as far as if, there's no problems on the table taking care of all the small details playing the proper angles and, and not precise rushing. cue ball making oh, sure just, that yeah such a beautiful game to watch if you watch justin bergman for an extended period of time i mean it, it really is to me one of the things that made me fall in love with pool was watching justin bergman it's i mean yeah. it's, it's unbelievable what he does with his cue ball and 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 the, the other thing is the more you bet, the better he plays. <laughs> Justin, Justin Bergman. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So that's uh, that's the one thing that I always liked about him. You know, if you if you were going to bet a big amount of money, you wanted to do it behind he, the he's iceberg. The, he's like one of the only guys that ever figured out how to actually bear down. <laughs> most yeah. most of the the commentators out there will say, "Oh, you really got to bear down on this one." Justin Bergman really does. Yeah. Oh, he's going to get out pogo stick here. Yeah, this, this is, is uh, cool. the last few racks actually while we're talking uh, we we've, we've started to see started to see the true difficulty and the true absurdity of the nine ball god. Uh, the last rack, you no know, two racks ago, right? He had no shot. He literally had no shot. Couldn't bank the two up in the corner, couldn't bank the two past the eight. Had to just slam the balls and see if something would happen and then the last rack was his first dry break. And now another rack where he's broken and now he has a jump shot and misses it. Now he's going to practice it one more uh, time because he. This this is actually a super makeable jump shot for for both he and Christina. They're both so good at jumping with shots like that where you have a, a what I like to call a manipulable angle, like an angle that you can do something with. Uh, first time I played Christina, she had I played two different safes. I was playing some of the best pool of my life up to that point in that specific match. Two of my safes I did exactly as intended and she just jumped the ball in and ran out. It's unreal what yeah. these guys can do. I tell you what though, I mean obviously when I'm betting on, on Fetter, I love the jump cue, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Sure. I really I really like the uh I like the moving side of the game. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people like that. I mean, obviously, I, I, just like everybody else, I love to watch a nice jump shot. Don't get me wrong. When somebody, you know, jumps up there and spears the ball and draws it full table length off a jump cue. I mean, I, you know, I love to see that as well. Sure. I just, I hate to see, you know, a, a nine out of 10 safety. Um, you just be able to pull out a jump cue and be able to play safe back with ease. I feel like you should have to, if you put them in a spot where they've got to kick two or three rails, they got to do it. Sure, sure. But another dry break, right? Yeah, he's. It seems like the last couple breaks, and the uh, obviously missing that jump shot and everything. He seems a little out of sorts here. Seems like maybe he's a little distracted. He's got to. You see him like trying to ground himself right there. He's like, I know how to break the balls. I just did it like 12 times in a row, dead perfect. But that's how little margin of error we're working with in this game, and, and especially at the level that Fetter plays at. It's like, you got to hit it perfect. Is this 7-6? to six? It should be 7-7. 7-7. 7-7. to seven. Seven seven to seven. Seven. Oh, man. Two dry breaks and, and all a of a very sudden, makeable jump shot. And the lead is wiped out. And now he's hooked on the two. Yeah, no jumping here. This is kind of the way I thought it was going to go. You sure. Know? I mean, obviously, 
we were talking about the first 10 racks. He had, he had easy looks. Um, and he should have been able to capitalize on those looks, and he how, didn't. How do you even pull out the jump cue here? At the bank shot? I guess he's going to jump bank it. How do you even get over the six with enough oomph to get the two to the pocket? You got a little I guess you heard, there. You, yeah. heard, you heard my three-year-old. He, came to, tell me, he t- came to tell me good night. Oh, so sweet. Oh, man. Look how choked he, choked up he is on the on the cue. Yeah, I mean this, this is one of those that's just gonna barely roll in. I guess he's going for the cut because he's not gonna be able to get much volume on, or he's not gonna be able to get much power on this ball. All the power is gonna be to getting it over this. Oh, wow. Very close though. Getting it over the six ball is tough enough. <sighs> Anybody in the chat? We got 600 people watching right now, and I bet you like probably about 580 of them wouldn't have gotten over that ball. <laughs> so tough. Timeout. Okay. I don't. I don't blame him. T O T O. The gods put him in a trap. He says. Oh, he's trying to put. He, he's trying to make the god remember the last rack he won. I think it was about five racks ago, right? Yeah. He was. He was up seven to three. He was seven up seven to, to three. I think it was seven to three. Yeah. Lost he, five in a row. He's trying to ice the ghost right now. Uh, uh, Soraya Sunny, what is the format of the game? The game is nine ball. Nine ball on the spot, breaking from the match room break box. And if you miss, you lose. That's it. You must break and run. Cleopatra says, for a while, I didn't know how to jump. Instead, always kicking or using the rail to jump. I personally used to like love 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 the kicking side of the game and it was one of the strongest parts of my game and then i got a jump cue and found out how fun it was to jump balls and certainly my kicking game has suffered since then there's no doubt about it it's too fun man (laughs) yeah i mean listen I, i love to see um the jump cue used in an offensive way what sure. I really dislike about the jump cue is on the defensive battles and those exchanges where somebody makes an unbelievable shot to kind of get out of a spot. Whether, you know, let's say they, they kick two rails and they kick safe and, and they planned it that way. And then they just got a snooker out of it and somebody pulls the jump cue out and it just plays an easy shot back. Like, I hate to see that. I hate to see sure. somebody get, you know, kind of punished. Um, for having a little cue. I don't know. I don't when it's when it's used for an offensive purpose, I really enjoy it. Sure. But in those in those defensive exchanges, it, you, it you don't like the fact me. that someone could just, you know, just jump, hit the ball straight and whether or not you hit half the ball or a quarter ball doesn't really make a difference. You end up getting a good hook out of it or, or getting some good return yeah. out of it and, and and it's not the same as like a super tough jump shot where you're going to jump to pocket the ball is what you're saying right yeah yeah i mean if it's something that's extremely skillful i like watching it but if it's if it's just something where you can just you know i could do it i don't think it should be allowed yeah one ball down but one ball down yeah. and an unbelievably difficult shot on the two ball it i think it passes the seven. On this? i think it passes for the cut shot in the cool. corner and the, the billiard on the seven is absurd because you can't control the two yeah, I don't think I don't think it's even available. So he's got a he's got a cut at the two in the bottom left corner here. Only good and news is you can tight. you can cut the table and go back and forth and and have some kind of shot on the three. So you don't really need to pay attention to the cue ball here. There's a little bit of traffic. You might be able you might unlucky you run into the eight or the nine or something. But you got good odds here. I think as long as you just make the ball. But that is a tall order in itself, right? Yeah, I mean I'm betting a lot of money against making this ball. See how he hits it. Yeah. No huevos. Yeah, and the God. The reality of the tear. God. Yeah. I mean, that's six games in a row, right? Like yeah. he uh, he broke drive few, he missed a couple jumps, and then it was was faced with that. Really getting punished in the last six racks. But he wishes he could have had those 
the missed six ball up the rail. The memory was frozen just below the side pocket. The right. straight in eight ball. He wishes he had those shots back. And we are racing to 21 if you're just now tuning in. He is racking with the nine on the spot. He's using the template that they use at the matchroom events. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the exact template. It's that super thin, almost like magic rack style template, right? Yeah, it's. I, I think it's more of a magic rack than an accu rack because I think it's more plastic than yeah. paper. Yeah, but it's thinner. It's a thinner material than the than the magic rack itself. I think it's really good. But dry yeah. break. <sighs> wow. This is one of those things about the game where, like, like, how good would he have kept playing if if the break was still kind of working for him? Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, once the game kind of gets away from you, momentum is such a real thing as far as execution goes, too, because all of a sudden what felt so natural before starts to subtly come into your mind about, like, oh, okay, well... Am I having to like work to place this thing, or should or should I just let the natural thing happen? Yeah, that, you know that's the thing we always talk about. It's 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 so funny because you watch you watch the the professional players play, and if you go to the tournaments, it's unbelievable. The guys that break good, how good they play throughout the tournament. We know they all have the same ability to run out. And, you know, most of these guys outside of the, after the break, there's 50 of them that are the same. And then you've got the elite, elite, like Joshua Filler and Fetter. And, you know, there's a handful of guys. There's five guys that are elite that are above everybody mm -hmm. else. And then there's a group of 50 guys that are basically the same. Yeah. It's just who finds the break at that tournament, and they look like they're playing unbelievable, but it's really because they found the break. Right. And if you can't find the break, you can't find a rhythm, you can't run balls, you don't get as much table time, everything's tough, um, it, it becomes a very and, challenging game. And what you mean by finding the break, for those that, that aren't really like sure exactly what that means, it's an entirely subconscious process. That's what he means about finding the break. It's not something... That was so close, by the way, that two-ball bank was absurdly close for how difficult it was but like finding the break is something where it's very much momentum oriented it's like uh when things are working it just kind of happens on its own but when it's not working all of a sudden you feel like you're searching for this thing that that you're kind of like grasping at straws it's like uh unless your name yeah. is literally like <clears throat> those five guys that you were talking about <laughs> Yeah, but you know, the, the other thing is, and I think this is what a lot of uh, viewers may not understand, and if you get to kind of see behind the scenes, like I'm so fortunate to do with Fetter, it, they don't just have one break. They practice all different types of breaks because they never know what the conditions are going to be. Maybe the balls are dirty. Maybe the tables are dirty. Maybe there's a mm -hmm. ton of lights. Maybe the, the, um, you know, the humidity in the room is different. There's a ton of people around the table. There's a lot of different things that change the break. Um, so you got to have multiple breaks, different speeds, different spins, different paths of the cue ball. And he's straight in on the two, gave us a fist bump. But, <laughs> you know, the, the best players in the world, the best players in the world at the break shot have the ability to figure the break out quickly yeah. by watching other players in the room but also just by figuring it out in their brain. They can't tell you how they figured it out, but they, it, it's just something in their brain tells their arm what to do, and right. they find it quick. Yeah, that's what um, I mean about the subconscious process. It's like a, yeah. it's almost like they can feel how the balls are going to, like, you know, the balls in the rack. You know how, like, you can feel when you're down on the ball playing some kind of, like, like a follow shot where you're kind of pushing through the ball with a little bit of outside spin so you can adjust the angle off the first rail. You know, you can kind of feel that a little bit. I can only imagine that at the best level of the game, like like Shane Van Boning breaking 10 ball or Tyler Steyer breaking 10 ball or, you know, Fetter or Filler breaking 9 ball, it's almost like they can feel how the balls are going to interact with each other in the stack. Like It's got to be some kind of like uh, sublime feeling when you have that subconscious... Uh, I don't know, like intuition, you know? Yeah, it's like it's like Steph Curry coming across the half court line and, and, and pulling up, you know. Right. I mean there's he just feels it. I mean yep. it's just you can't 
there's nothing else you can say. And, and honestly, you know, I spent a lot of time with Skyler. I think that's his, his biggest advantage. Skyler Woodward's biggest advantage in pool is his ability to find the break. Yeah. He, he does it better than anybody. And, and to be candid, I think Skyler Woodward is probably the best nine ball, <clears throat> the best nine ball breaker in the world. All wow. formats. That's, that's, you know, and I'm, I don't think I'm going on a limb. I think if you asked um, all the all the players, they would all tell you the same. Yeah. If, if you take all formats, three yeah. point rule, any of the goofy rules that you can you can right. put up, he's the the best. Don't get jacked up over the yeah, nine. Yeah, he's jacked up over the nine. Hey, uh, we should both click the uh, in a second here after this rack, Jason. Uh, okay. What I want you to do on your YouTube video after this rack, we'll wait until after this rack, but just click back like an hour ago or something on the, on the you know, where you can control where you're watching the video, you know? Like click back an hour and then click the live button in the lower corner because okay. I, think, I think you're delayed a few more seconds than me. He made the nine or the seven. What a great shot. See the delay. You're probably watching the seven right now. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Such a good shot. Yeah, and that's a, you know, jacked up over a ball like that full table length I mean, but this is no hanging this here no he's not out of the yet. woods i think he's gonna have to draw this ball and play the nine in the same the punch oh, over wow wow he held the cue ball see the spoilers are coming through jason oh so such a sweet stroke there that's such a tough shot so tough and he makes the nine i'm gonna update the score here so the score goes to 10 to 8 and then, like I said, we're, we're both going to click back about an hour, let it sit for a couple seconds, and then click the live button on the, on the stream so that we're both back live. Dennis hasn't made it far in any tournament since the matchroom break box or break from the box in the nine on the spot format. Dennis hasn't been playing. Been playing, yeah. Ever since he got the the visa issues banned, yeah. from the United States, I don't think he can travel even in Europe right now, can he? Or or is that not translate? Do you know the rules on that, or what uh, what the what was going on with that? I mean, he he. Oh, is it eleven Dennis eight? Never... Everyone, everyone's telling me it's eleven eight in the chat. Did I miss one? Yeah, it's eleven eight. Okay. Thanks, chat. And I'm clicking around here. Sorry, guys. I got down. Thank you, Joseph Gabriel. We didn't mark it when he missed the long bank on the two. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer Rabbit, for confirming. But no, Dennis, Dennis Arcola hasn't been playing in, in any events. And, and to be honest, even before his ban, he didn't really go to a lot of match room events anyways. Sure. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Dennis likes to come to America and gamble. That's what his, his yeah. favorite thing to do is. He doesn't care. Oh, my God. He doesn't. Wow, what a shot. <laughs> Are you back live? Did you see that at the same time as me or roughly I, at the same time? No, I was I was behind. Just a hair behind? Okay. Yeah. It's a nice shot there. I'll try to delay my reactions by a couple seconds. <laughs> Just for you. Well, the next time we go live, Collins, we'll have to have a little bit better setup. Sorry, I didn't have more time today. No, that's okay. I think things are going pretty swimmingly, considering. Look at this tough shot here, though. Yeah, you got to swing at this one. Just got to let the cue ball go, and whatever happens, happens. It's all about making the shot here. No reason to try to um, do anything to navigate. Just... Whatever way you like to make this ball is how you shoot it. Ooh, how about that? Unreal, dude. Unreal. Wow. That's unbelievable. That's what a unbelievable. shot. <laughs> look at look at this cue ball on the four ball. That's so sick. No, X Ninja. I I agree with you that Kachi has a better ten ball break. I'm I'm just saying nine ball. Nine ball break's not about power. 
Um, ten ball break, eight ball break, obviously, is more about power. I think Skyler does not break very good ten ball, but as far as the not best nine ball breaker, and, and it's just my personal preference, but I think it's I think if you ask a lot of top pros, they would say the same. That, that's why the debate with uh, or or why the name Skyler Woodward in ten ball has really only come up on the bar box because the bar box doesn't take as much power; it takes control, right? Yeah. Oh. It, Oh, and Fetter Dog's a five ball. Mm-mm-mm. 12 to 8. Don't forget to mark that one, Collins. They're going to get, yeah. on, get on you no, in the exactly. chat. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to um, you know, hold one back for my boy. Man, I tell you what, if you're out there, Fetter's struggling. He needs more subscribers. So if you're out there and you're not subscribed to Fetter Gore's channel, make sure you hit that subscribe yeah. button. And actually, no, no, no cap at all. Make sure you click that. Uh, whoops, what did I click on right there? Make sure you click the like button so that other people like you that have similar viewing preferences to you will find streams like this a lot easier. That like button makes a huge difference. How many people have clicked the like button? I'm just curious. I heard somebody say there was 700 people watching and only 150 likes, so make sure you smash the like button. Yeah, 178 likes with 675 concurrent viewers. We could probably get that number to 300 pretty easy, guys. The thumb... I know it's sometimes tough to get your thumb to move, but it doesn't take a whole lot of energy. Two ball has no pocket here, except the side pocket, and it's a tough cut. Or a blind back cut at the corner, but that's almost like Tony Chohan one pocket absurd. <laughs> Jeff Martin in the chat says, dogging it? Wrong show. <laughs> Speaking of dog in it, huge shout out to Melina Mike for the discussion that he has uh, basically been the catalyst for. With uh, the WPA with stuff? The, yeah. Uh, yeah, huge shout out to Melina Mike for, for being passionate enough in his opinions to... We, I would say usher that discussion into the public viewing because I think that it's super important that the public in this game knows or at least is a, like somewhat aware of what's going on uh, to put a little bit of pressure on the people in in the position to make those types of decisions. Um, is that 13 now? That is 13 to 8, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, we've been we've been kind of talking about some some different things. Obviously, you know, with with Predator and Matchroom, and yeah. and there's there's a lot of different things that are going on. The competition's actually good. I just saw the what is it? The World Eight Ball seventy five thousand dollars to the winner. I mean, it's 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 helping because people that have money are getting pissed off and and, and at other people, and it's you know char charging them up a little bit. So it's yeah. a good thing for pool. Um, Competition is a great thing, and having multiple promoters, promoters being able to make money off of the events is yes. what's going to keep the events going. So TV is a big part of it. Sponsorships yes. are a big part of it, and and things like this Fetter Gorse channel. I mean, this is yep. this is helping. This is helping viewerships and and Matchroom and Predator and Upstate Al and Pool Action TV and everybody yep. benefits. By, by this young man, Fetter Gorse, growing his YouTube channel. I mean, because the more fans he has, the more often they're going to go out and try to watch those uh, matches that he has on those streams. And, um, you know, it just helps. If, if we had more people in pool just like Fetter, then it could become, you know, a, yes. a more recognized game. And it, and it well, could be. Th this was a, a huge you know. catalyst for. Uh, there's a lot of pool players, a lot of people in the game of pool that are also at least somewhat aware or have been fans of poker. Poker went through two big, uh, call it, exposure moments. The first one was obviously the Chris Chris Moneymaker moment that everyone's heard of. Chris Moneymaker was this guy that yeah. just won this forty dollars satellite tournament to the main event and then won the main event, won like three million dollars or something like that. The game of poker blew up after that for a while, and then it kind of suffered because online poker was having issues with fraud and and scams and stuff, and and uh, the whole full tilt thing happened, and so ex exposure tanked after that. But then it started picking up again when people. And, and personalities and people that were really good at the game started doing live streams with poker. And I feel like, you know, we have the, pro the professional side 
with the what would you call it like the sports broadcasting model is starting to have a really good product in multiple places in this game but the personal side for the pros like moments like this with Federer I I can't wait until there are more guys like Federer out there doing something like this where they can show you know show themselves in the heat and in the moment um and in practice uh I think it's only going to do good things for the game. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, it's it's, it's got to be a collective effort. There yeah. has to be more. There has to be more professionalism in the yeah. sport. Um, you know, and, and I don't mean, I don't mean, well, we almost missed that nine. I know it was a bubble, yeah. I hear a lot of people, Collins, talk about, oh, you can't, it, it's the gambling, it's the drinking, it's the smoking, it's, oh, it's all that. Yeah. It's none of that. Like no. to me, that's the great thing about pool. Like that's what I love about pool is the shit talking. Yep. You know, somebody's drinking beer and they come up and they pull out a wad of money and they think they've got a great bet and you take it and you go home and you get in the car and you laugh all the way home and you tell them the story, you know, five years later. That's the best thing about pool to me is the is kind of the bad side of it. And I, I think it's a common error when people say, Oh, we need to be more professional. Well, I don't think it needs to be more professional. We need more people like Fetter that are actually treating it like a job. Right. And and I'm not even talking so much just about his preparation. Obviously, his preparation and his ability to treat it like a job is why he's one of the best in the world. I'm talking about you know his preparation, his work ethic, off the table to promote himself in the game. If we had more people doing this, I mean, he's look, he's. He's, he's trying to work on his website. He's trying to work on blogs. He's trying to work on his YouTube channel. He's, mm -hmm. I mean, he's buying neon lights. He's got, look at his little <laughs> light stick underneath of there. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's doing everything he possibly can do to grow a YouTube channel, to get people to watch what he loves to do and how he wants to, to make his living. So if we had, just think if we had a hundred people that exactly. were doing what he's doing right now. Exactly. We, more people would be interested in it. You don't need more professionalism. It was it was three weeks ago. He was just playing Tony Chohan for forty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, there there wasn't anything not professional about that just because he was gambling. Um, you know, nobody's gonna think he's a bad person because of that. Jason, um, I think I think you probably haven't heard my my opinion on this this point. The word gambling is a sound that we make when we are trying to communicate a specific idea, right? The problem is, in my opinion, that when people talk about gambling in pool, it's not the same thing as gambling at the casino. It's not even no. close. As, no. Unless you're a degenerate that really has a problem that thinks that they're going to make a big score off of some random guy at the pool hall you've never met before. That's not a, generally a good idea. But Federer and Tony know how each other play. You know what I mean? They're they're uh, both adults. They both are extremely knowledgeable about the game, and so they're not going to put themselves into a spot that is like, uh, you know, oh well, I know I'm going to lose in the long run, but I'm going to try to score right now, anyways. You know, neither of them are, yeah. are. It's a game of skill. It's a game of sport. It's like a completely different thing. We still use the word gambling to describe what's happening in that moment, but it's just not the same thing. No, I mean, and, and honestly, to tell you the truth, if you look at any sport, there's gambling. I yes. mean, I just sit and watch the NFL. I mean, I, if it wasn't for fantasy football and me being able to, to get on DraftKings and bet, right? I'm not going to sit there all day and watch the NFL. Like, sure. look, it's not that interesting to me. So the, yeah. the gambling part of it, I hear a lot of people talk, you know, talk smack about pool because of the gambling and the drink. That that's the that's the best part of it to yeah. me. Um, so I don't think we need to remove that. We just need people that are more business minded that are willing to wake up before 4 p.m and yeah. actually do something outside of pool <laughs> and 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 help grow what the game is J i mean jason like literally right before that alan came in the chat alan sword says why is nfl so popular sports betting <laughs> yeah i mean it, it really is it really is the truth um, yeah. so a yeah, couple what, of really good nice shots shot there, there by fetter yeah a couple of couple of really good shots too, Sorry, uh, there's there's a, there's a couple things in pool that I like to go off on a tangent about. And that's one of them. I just, no, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I see it. I, I see it just over and over. And you know, even social media stuff. These these players have the ability to 
actually change the outcome of their career 100%. and the money that they can earn. 100%. It just takes more of them doing it. I mean, if you look at like the Shane Wolfords and and I know a lot of people are always hating on Tyler Steyer, but to me, he treats it like a job. Like I, I even if he does things that I, I think, yeah, it's kind of goofy that, that Tyler handles his stuff like that. At the end of the day, he still treats it like a job. I respect the guy. A hundred percent. You know, he's, he's waking up in the morning and he's going for a run. He's, he's watching what he eats. He's practicing. He's tucking his shirt in. He's looking professional. He's trying to do the right things. Now, you know, sometimes he does dumb things. He's, he's not eating any vegetables. He's eating only yeah. carnivore. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I actually got the chance to meet Tyler uh and, and Margaret actually hung out in my booth for a while during a couple of the matches that happened during the Brendan Crockett recently. Um, and it was super interesting getting to know them as individuals. Super nice people. Yeah, I mean, we just need we need more people that are willing to put in the work and to do things off the table to, to build a revenue stream and to grow the interest of the game. And that's yep. that's the key to me. Eyes on the game. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, and, you know, listen, from my perspective, you know, I'm not speaking for Fetter here, but from my perspective, there's a lot of things that happen in pool and there's a lot of things that the promoters do that I don't necessarily agree with. Sure. I think that, um, you know, I think Matchroom is all about creating the drama and they sure. like to, to, to kind of feast off of it. But, sure. you know, at the end of the day, what they're doing is, is helping all the players. They're trying to. I mean, yep. they're just, you know, I mean, they should be allowed to make money, too. A hundred percent. And actually, up to this point, up to this point, event on event, most of their events up to this point are all money losers. But they know that the game is objectively good enough for them to get to the point where they can uh, really make some good money. And and they should. They, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're flying around and you're putting organizing, doing all that stuff, they're uh, they're supposed to make money. Yeah, but. The tough thing is they you in order to have enough money to be able to pay the players what we need to be able to pay the players. Because, yeah. I mean, hotels are expensive, flights are expensive, everything has gone up. To become, to be able to make a living playing pool now, there's there's less than a dozen guys that can do it and yeah. make a decent living, you know, and, and that's, that's pretty sad to me. I mean, I've seen a lot of the really good players, a lot of the good, really good American players, they don't even travel anymore because they can't make um any money doing it the expenses are so high so it's tough to tough to watch gosh look at this shot jason oh Ooh, my gosh sweet. wow that yeah, was nice there and he's even got a good angle on the three ball here <laughs> it's perfect he's like de like ball in hand perfect that's that shot right there that he that he just made i think is is um one of the things outside of his the ability to, to jump, his ability to break, I think those are his big differentiators. To me, I yeah. think the thing that, that makes him outside of his brain, okay, I think I think his brain is his number one attribute in, in every aspect of the game. For me, I think that's his biggest attribute. But then outside of that, obviously, Fedor Gors, what he's known for is his big break and his jump cue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you when you play the game of rotation, whether it be nine ball or ten ball, normally if you're not playing the god like we're playing right now, uh, you have the ability to push out. So you after the break, if you don't have a shot at the two ball, like he has almost every time in this match, right. you have the ability to push the cue ball anywhere you want, and then your opponent gets the option whether or not they shoot or give it back to you. Feder is a master at being able to push out because of his ability to jump, and. His opponents don't know whether to give it back or take it on because right, they don't right, want right. him shoot it because it's easy for him, but it's really hard for them, so they don't know what to do. So I think his ability to to break is the biggest differ, differ, differentiator, and then second would be his ability to jump. But then the third thing, I think you have to watch him a ton to understand it. He has this ability to thin cut balls, and the cue ball doesn't fly. Yeah. I have no idea how he does it. I have no idea. And it's really tough to explain, but <clears throat> for, for most of you players out there, if you've ever played pool and you have to barely clip the ball like you're shooting at, usually the cue ball goes flying around. Well, Fetter, I don't know how he does it, but he has the ability to thin cut a ball 
and the Q wall does not fly around. Yeah. I, I can't explain it. I don't know how he does it. I really don't. Oh, it's, it, it's crazy yeah, he just to like see. knows exactly exactly how much he can get out of the cut shot, like whether it be at pocket speed or slightly more than than pocket speed, he can just judge it perfectly before he shoots it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's obviously the judgment, but it's also something some something that he's developed in his stroke. Uh huh. Right. Like uh, I don't I know that sounds weird. You're getting a little too woo woo for me. <laughs> yeah. A little woo woo. Yeah. Hey, pull his life, man. Read, yeah. the, read the neon line. Yeah, there, yeah, Colin. you got me. I'm right there. I was close. <clears throat> Meanwhile, marching on his way. He's trying to get to 11, right? Trying to get to 11 to 13, yeah. You were talking about playing the god earlier and, and uh, saying something about how normally you're playing other guys that you can push out against. Well, he's playing out against a guy you can't. He's playing against a guy you can't push out against, and he's only down by two games. Yeah, and, and to be honest, he um, should be winning. Definitely one jump shot. One jump shot, would you would think that he's the favorite. Well, the eight ball that he missed. Oh, yeah, there were two, two balls that he dogged. Favorite. Yeah, yeah, there were two balls that... Oh, a five ball now, too. The five ball yeah. that he dogged up in the top left corner, too. Yeah, you're right. He should be up. Someone in the chat says he hits the ball fuller. I think he was talking about the uh, those cut shots. Maybe, maybe what that person is saying. Maybe Fetter has a really good feel for like gearing English, and in yeah. order to like maximize the amount of uh, of kinetic energy transfer or whatever. Yeah, where he, where it, it, On it's thin definitely cuts. some. It, it's definitely an English plus stroke. Yeah. That he has mastered for sure. Oh, you're right. Whoever said that in the chat, in the chat is is correct. Ooh, oh 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 oh! Four ball. Oh, he's begging. <laughs> I think he got there. Stop begging. I think he got there. He wants it to be there. Look at him. <laughs> has he got to swerve the ball? Maybe. Hey, no funny business with the rack. Okay, no, he didn't touch the cue ball. Oh, I think he's got it. It's tough to say. His body language says he probably has it, but it's tough to get to the three. All right. Let's see. I think you're right. I think he's going to have to do a little mass say here. Yeah, well, he punched it. He was able to punch it and get to the three. All right. If you're if I'm you're behind me again, by the way, try try clicking live again. Like if you click back five ten minutes and then click live, hopefully that'll sort it out because it still feels like I'm a few seconds ahead of you. Yeah. By the way, if you're watching and wondering what we're talking about, uh. The way that we're doing this, because I'm out in California, and uh, Jason, you're like next door, right? Yeah, I'm next door. So yeah. Fetter's Fetter's in a barn that, that we built for him to practice in. Right, right. So I'm and in I'm California, in and and the way that we're able to watch this uh, is Fetter has given us a a private link to a stream that we are then restreaming out to you guys. So that's what we're talking about when when Jason is watching a few seconds behind me. A uh, nice one, Lefty941. Nice little inside joke in the chat there. <laughs> that one. Playing the window here. Windows open between the eight and the nine. No worries. No worries. 
As long as you don't shark fetter with all the the camera changes, all the video Skype changes. Just kidding, obviously. And we're looking at 11, or sorry, 12 to 13. And my feed just froze. Yeah, mine did too. I lost the, um, there you go. Bear with us, guys. You can see that I'm still live. If you're watching my webcam, we're still live. That live stream that I was just talking about that Fetter gave to us uh, a private link to, that's what you're seeing uh, freeze a little bit, but it looks like we're moving again. While we have some technical difficulties, I'm going to run to rest okay, really yeah, yeah. quick. Awesome. I will right back. get rid of your little box there. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the kind words and the jokes in the chat guys <laughs> one ball down two ball tracking towards the side pocket not going to get off the rail very far but it looks like it might no with how small these pockets are I don't think I do not think this two ball is cuttable in the side, especially based on his posture. Look at his body language. He might have to cross this ball and go up and down the table and try to get on the good side of the three. That would be so ridiculous. Commentator Junior, yes, very yes. <laughs> yeah, no huevos there. Too tough. He tried to stiff it and cinch the cue ball. Get her unfrozen there. Yeah, my stream is is uh, good. My stream is live. It's been. He's currently racking. Just put the six on the back. Now he's tightening up the rack. Tapping the six again. Just grabbed his cue. Yeah, mine's frozen. I may have to. Uh, Maybe refresh the out. whole page. Yeah. Or if you, you said you were watching on your phone, if you can close the YouTube app and reopen it with that link, it might help. Who's the nine ball god? The god is the ghost's, uh, the ghost's father. Let's go nine ball. Oh, almost making the golden break here. And now the two ball has no pocket. There's a ticky off the nine for the two ball though. I wonder if he plays the ticky off the nine and cinches the cue ball towards the three, like follows the tangent line with the cue ball. Side pocket's kind of big if you take that shot. Yeah, the, the, the god never misses, and you don't get ball in hand. You must break and run. Oh, he's playing with a high ball here. Oh, he played the nine. Oh, he played the carom on the nine, and he missed it. Hmm. Oh, wow. That was so close. Wait, do I have the score wrong again? Is it 14, 12, or 15? Is it 15, 12 now? Did I miss one again, guys? Sometimes I get a little bit too involved with the chat. Please let me know. Did I miss one? Is it 15, 12? Bank time pool. I trust. I definitely trust it. Uh, bank. Pardon me. I can't speak. I definitely trust bank time pool. 15 to 12, guys. <laughs> Mr. 
Marty Smalls, we're leaving Thickless Cage on post up, okay? That is not that is not a part of this stream. One ball down. I think the two ball goes past the eight here. It's pretty close. Brandon Schilling, what's up in the chat? Good to see you. We got 830 people watching and 300 likes. I'm going to be a little nitty right here. I thought we could get to 300 when we had 600 people watching. Can we push that to 400? Can 90 of you just like pick that thumb up and show this guy some love? And by this guy, I don't mean the guy with two thumbs. I'm talking about the guy on the table right now. All right. I think we got Jason back. I am back. Sorry, He's I was back. And the reload there. So what's the score now? Fifth is it fifteen, 15 to, 12 to twelve or fourteen yeah. to twelve? Fifteen to twelve and Feder has a shot. Is he shooting the five ball for you right now? He is shooting the five. I'll tell you when he strokes. Just stroke now. Oh, I'm, I'm right. I'm right there with you. Now. Let's go. Let's go. I feel like I'm in the game. Colin. Let's go. <laughs> this is going to be close. I mean, I'm telling you, he's I been know. So good. He's got a shot at winning this. I don't think he had a shot, but he does. When you gave me your number of saying that he was five to seven games the dog, I was thinking that that was ambitious. But now watching this, I'm like, I'm a believer, Jason. I'm a believer. Yeah, but I mean, look, he's he's down 15 to 12, and he's broke as good as he could break. I mean, this table is so tough. It yeah. really is. I know watching on the stream, it's, I think it's it, you can't really comprehend how tough this table actually is. But look at how perfect the speed control on that draw shot with a little bit of outside spin. It's so sick. Yeah, it was nice, nice speed control there. And he's going to cut it to two games, right? 15 yeah. to 13? 15 13 is the score. So after 28 games, only separated by two. Oh, no. Dom Nice in the chat says he bought the Ghost uh, in the Calcutta. Dude, I didn't even know the Ghost was playing in this tournament. <laughs> it was funny earlier. They were. We were all sitting around watching football, and everybody said, "Oh, I'll take the ghost. I'll take the ghost against Feder." And I said, "They said, how much can we bet?" And I said, "Whatever you want. <laughs> if you want to bet against the ghost, you can bet whatever you want. Whatever He's not you playing want. Playing the ghost. Yeah. Playing the god. Big difference here. So if you're just now tuning in with us, Feder has to break and run. He does not get ball in hand after the break. He has to break. He has to make a ball on the break. He can't scratch, and he has to run out." all the balls from wherever he sets. That's what playing the God is. Um, and even if he doesn't have anything offensive, he's got to try to kick at it or hit something hard and hope. But the most important thing that he's trying to do here is he's trying to make the one in the side. He's this. been very successful at it. And look at Did this shot on again. the two. Look at oh, this yeah, shot he's... on the two. I'm going to give him the commentator's, jer <laughs> commentator's jinx here. He's out. Just... If if I'm if I'm playing against him here, I just tell him rack him up, kid. You get this one. Move your bead. <laughs> just right off the break. Yeah, I mean, look at this. The six balls laying over the side. This is as good of a break as you're going to see in this format. Yeah. Basically, the toughest thing that he's going to have to do here is from the seven to the eight. I mean, it. This is um, this is the absolute perfect rack for nine ball. The way that he broke those. So yeah. I mean, if they weren't four-inch pockets, I'd tell you this is take And I'm not positive if the eight passes the nine in the top left. Even but, so, I would think that the way to play it is to yeah, is it's to the play the way. eight the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Even here, if you're, you could even play this with a high inside ball. You could punch across the table. There's so many options from here. Yeah, he's just gonna draw it one rail down, believe, like this. Yeah. Oh, you got a little short. Yeah, it came up short. All right. A little suspense here. Can't just give it to him. Try 
chalking up extra heavy here. He wants to beat the god. He's chalking up super heavy because he's going to play a bit of a finesse shot, it looks like, with like a low outside ball, a ton of finesse. And sends Dogged it into the it. short rail, yeah. Ugh. That's one that you got to get out, and you definitely cursed him. Everybody in the chat knows mm. it was your fault. I'll take full responsibility for that one. Wow. He's just proving to tough. everyone, by the way. He's just proving to all you guys he does know how to make that shot. <laughs> he says, ay, 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 ay. Yeah. I don't blame him. I still have this weird feeling that he's going to come back and win. Yeah? He's breaking great. He's breaking, like, silly. He is. I love to see oh. it because he's got a shot at winning the U.S. Open if he breaks like this. That's for sure. Yeah. No, Fed, I am seeing someone in the chat that it's 15-14. Is it 16-14? to 14? No, I don't think, I think so, guys. Six. I think it's 16-13. to 13. Is it really? For, when did I miss another one? Give me a second. I'll go confirm. My apologies, guys. Look at this break. He's going to get a nice look at the deuce here, I believe, if it stays clean. Oh. Yeah, so he is racking the nine on the spot. He is breaking with the, the match room break box. He's not pattern racking, so what that means is he's, he's randomly placing the balls um, into the rack so he does not get the same layout every time. He's putting the two ball in a different spot every time. And he has to break, make a ball, and run out. Pretty tough to do. Yeah, I, I agree that I think it's 16 to 13. I think you're confirming, though. I am. I'm going back through my live stream where I have the scoreboard on the. I don't think he's hooked. Yeah, it is definitely 16 here. to 13. I just watched it back, guys. Certainly 16 to 13. Oh, nice little bump there. Pulled the five over to him. This is no hanger on this table, though. I, I don't want to be shooting this with shot for the cash. No, me either. So here's here's an interesting question for you, Collins. We yeah. can talk about it and we can get everybody in the chat going a little bit. I can't wait. How would you how would you feel about Fetter Gores playing on Team USA in the Moscone Cup? <laughs> I mean Are we living in fantasy land where there are unicorns and sasquatches no, and... no i mean this is the real world he lives in america yeah um you know he's, he's his plans are on... to acquire citizenship yeah i mean obviously i, I mean think... but, i mean listen it's match room they can do whatever the hell they want to do there's there's no governing body okay if they want that's to fair. put him on the team team usa they can do it that's fair right I mean, it's it's Emily's world. She has the ability to do whatever she wants to she do. She does. Yeah, okay. That's a fair point. Now, they would then have to deal with uh, what they would want to... How would I say this? What would their argument be for integrity, then? Because up to this point, the only reason that he hasn't played on the United States team is because he's not a United States citizen, but he's been living in the States now for how long? I mean, I don't really know how long it's been. Um, really, ever since the Russian, you know, the conflict. Right. Um, but he was frequenting here before. But, but you know, take all that aside. Doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Emily, okay. Emily can do whatever the hell she wants okay. to do, right? It's her world. We're all just living in it. She has the ability to do that. But also with that, she has the ability to create a lot of what she really wants to create, which is what? Drama. Exactly. Everybody would be talking about it. But not only that, would the USA 
be a legitimate contender with Federer on the team. I honestly think that that one pick would literally turn it into a virtual coin flip. A virtual coin flip. Well, I really do. I, mean, I, I still think the fifth person's weak, right? Obviously, you got Skyler, you got you got SVB, you would have Feder. For me, for my money, if I'm Team USA's captain, I mean, uh, as much as not everybody wants to admit it, Tyler Styers should be a fixture. Oh. Um, if you if you watched the Brendan Crockett yeah. out here, and I know it's ten ball, I know it's not nine ball. I get it. I know it's a different game, and his break is unreal. Oh, I wish I heard what he just said. I was talking over him. Um, but if you watched the way that Tyler played out here, and then at the Texas Open, it's like a year and a half ago, I was not sold on Tyler Steyer at all, at all. But literally in these last six months with how DP ran in that, that one matchroom event, right? And then what I saw at the Brendan Crockett here and then what he did at the Texas Open, there's no question in my mind he can play anybody on the planet right now. He's playing great. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying he can play anybody on the planet. Um, he, can, he can play. I'm not going to yeah, say I mean, he's going to he, win. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, a race to nine, he can beat anybody. A race yeah. to 11, he can beat anybody. And, and the Moscone Cup's a race to five. The thing right. for me that, that makes it to where I'm absolutely 100% going to pick Tyler Steyer for Team USA every single year is the number one thing for me. I know he's going to take it serious. I know he's going to be prepared. And I know he's going to break the balls well. Yeah. Like, that's it. Um, you know, do I think he's going to dog it in some pressure situations? Of course, but so are a lot of other people. Right. Um, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of other people that aren't going to care as much as he's going to care. So for me, he should be a fixture. All right, so let's say this. You got SVB, you got Sky. Those are locks. Like, yep. I wish that Bergman was a lock because yeah. he should be. Obviously, um, but yeah. And then, and then let's just call Tyler a lock because I like to be right. Um, <laughs> and then Fetter. Right, so who's who's the fifth? Who's the fifth? That's my question to you. All Wait, right, wasn't so, that five he, that you just listed? But you're no, not, you're yeah. not counting Justin Bergman, is your? No, point. I'm not counting. I'm not counting Bergman because he's not really traveling. You can't just hand him the spot, right? Like, yeah, you got to You've got to You've got to at least earn the spot. You got to be in the grease. You got to be playing. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Essentially, your you're, you're essentially you're picking someone that's circa 780 Fargo. You're essentially picking. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Rodney's out of the game. He's not playing at all, and honestly, he's not playing fantastic either. I uh, mean, even if he was, who cares? He's yeah. done. Oscar, Billy, Chris Reinold. Yeah. I mean, uh, Shane Wolford. Yeah. Right. So obviously, if you pick any of them. You know, I, I think it's probably between those fours who, yep. who you would be choosing from. And th those are all four of those are going to be a big drop off from Europe's fifth. Unless it, you know, it's like Kazakis or something. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so I, I don't think they're going to be a coin flip. But I mean, with if you got SVB, Skyler, and Fetter, yeah. their, their top three are going to be. You know, right with, with Europe in a race to five. Well, and the conditions. truth is, the truth is, the fifth player, the one who plays the least, uh, doesn't really play that much at all. <laughs> like, if you look at last year, uh, I don't know if you followed. I well, I followed it fairly closely because he he's from this room. Uh, Mike Salmon, the pool stat guy, like really followed literally every shot of the Moscone Cup last year. And if yeah. you look at the player who played the least from each team, uh, there's one player in each team that essentially plays. Like two or three matches, maybe. Yeah. They so, don't play that much, but they, they still have to play. They and still, they yeah. usually the, – the, here's the other thing that's that's crazy. If it, if, if it gets really close, they usually have to play toward the end on the final day because mm -hmm. usually the USA is trailing, so they're trying to throw all their best players out to keep the day going. Right. Um, and we know we're going to see Earl on the end or whatever if he's picked. Yeah. Um, Zach, Zach Robbins with the 199 Super Chat says, pick Lucas Werner. I would say in a couple of years, man, that kid, if he keeps, I mean, with how young he is and how he's been improving and, like, how he came out on the scene, he certainly has a chance to be uh, a fixture at some point. I mean, that kid's stroke is unbelievable and so effortless. 
Just think if I didn't jinx him, Collins. It's 16 to 15 now, correct? I know. I know we'd have an uh, opposite scoreline. It'd be 16 to 15 the other way. If I didn't give him the commentator's curse on that tic tac toe out, he'd be winning. You know, Jason, before today, oh, I had never man. met you, but now I know you're a real piece of work. I'm a jerk, I know. <laughs> what can I say? Sam Henderson's another one. With how young he is, holy hell, that kid has the potential to play so good. But we're talking potential with, with the last few names that have been mentioned in the chat. Yeah, I mean, but listen, it, it doesn't matter. Like, when you look at Europe, Europe has so many good players in that format. Mm -hmm. You could literally mix and match 20 different teams that would be huge favorites over USA. That doesn't mean that USA can't win. It's a race yeah. to five, high pressure. Like, we, we, we've seen that that Skyler. I mean, if you play, if you let Skyler pick, I don't know, one of 12 Europeans to play a race to 100, he's going to struggle to beat them. Yep. There's, you know, there's 12 of them, maybe 15 that he can't beat in yep. a long race. Yep. But in a race to five under the, in those conditions at the Moscone Cup, Skyler's a favorite because he just has so much He just deals with the pressure, so too. And yeah. his, his clutch shot-making ability is unbelievable in those those high-pressure, yeah. heated moments. It's, uh, it's unbelievable to watch. It's so fun to watch. It's uh, almost like he was built for that for that event, yeah, Skyler so was. There's, there, there's a few people in the chat saying things like, what about BJ Ussery? What about Joey Tate? It's like, I mean... <sighs> Uh, like Greg what about Hogue. what about Jason Sword? I mean, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, in in comparison to like their fifth player is going to be David Alcady or their fifth yeah. player is going to be Kachi or, or you know, I mean, it, it's it's the, or, the, you know they've got Albans and Kachis and and fillers and Alcady. I mean, it, what are you going to do? The, I mean, the closest the closest extra name I would say call it extra name in the chat is Jeremy Sosi because. But, but the guy doesn't compete. The guy only goes out to like two or three big tournaments a year. He doesn't really compete. And if he did, he has a chance to maybe get there and play that good, but he just doesn't do it. Listen, people are going to call me a hater, but let's just be honest. He can't compete at that level. No, I mean, no, he, he can't. No, I mean, I, I'd probably bet on, you know, if they if they played every day for the next three years, I'd probably bet on Lucas Werner. I mean, I, yes, I, I, I would agree with that too. Yeah, I, I would agree with shot. that too. He's going to be up against it here on the three. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's funny because everybody has their, their players that are from where they're from, and, they, and they, they watch them play. So they, you know, they start to like them as a person or they think that they're good. And then you go and watch filler play or you go and watch <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, you you're like watch, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, or you go watch, you know, SVB play. Or, I mean, there's just so many guys that it, USA really doesn't have – a fourth and fifth player. If you if Bergman's not in the picture, USA doesn't have a fourth and fifth player that is in that tier, or even yeah. close to that tier. As yeah. much as I, you know, I, I, and, and I, I'm not saying that to be a jerk because I love Oscar and I love Billy and I love no. Chris Robinson and I love Shane Wolford. Like every one of those of guys would agree with you. They just right. know the reality of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these these uh, European players are just built different right now. I mean, they're just. All machines. Case and point. Don't you dare run into the four ball. I was going to say, if he runs into the four oh, ball and clears it out God. right now, I'd be like, I'd be pissed. <laughs> what a shot that was. That was still such a good shot. Now he's got a chance at the uh, at the stiff bank here. To tie it up. Right yeah. Here. Pressure's on. I to Shane. I'd rather watch <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather watch my three-year-old play than Mike Deshane. He'd at least cry less. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Deshane. I didn't even know anybody even talked about him. Isn't he like oh, selling he windows or something? He crossed it. He hmm. crossed it. Hey, selling windows. I install windows. I'm pretty sure he's a car salesman or insurance salesman or something, isn't he? I don't know, but he should be a professional pool player as I'm... much talent as he had. He just didn't have it in between the ears. Yeah. Nothing wrong with selling windows, but... My dad Collins, sells he, windows. He, I mean, he's a great listen, guy. <laughs> hey, listen, if you played pool like Mike Deshane, there would be a problem with selling or installing windows, I got right? You. That's yeah, all yeah. I'm saying. That's like, fair. Yeah. If, you're, if you can jump like Kobe Bryant, you better play basketball. That's right. all I'm saying. Mike Deshane was an unbelievable talent, unbelievable shot maker, big break. He yeah. just couldn't keep it together between the ears. Yeah. It's plain and simple. Yeah. Just, he just couldn't handle the heat. 
And, and the thing is, he made it worse on himself. He just talked so much trash to everybody. He, he, he applied pressure to himself that was unneeded. Yeah. Even his team didn't like him. How many did he right. play? How many Moscone Cups did he play in? Played in quite a few. Oh, really? Nobody wanted to be. Nobody wanted to be his partner. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. God, he's breaking good. Yeah, he really is. But he got his. He, he got the cue ball a little low there. So he's trying to. He, he's trying to get the the cue ball to come right back through where the nine is. But it looks like he didn't hit enough low or not enough draw there. But he's still got a nice shot on the two. If the three goes, I mean, it's not easy. But it's doable. Sure beats being hooked or having to jump here. He's looking at the carom, the 3-8 carom. Yeah, he definitely doesn't look uh, enthusiastic. I wouldn't either facing this shot right here. Forget about the three going or not. Yeah, he's like he's got to hit this with an extreme high ball, follow through, and get down to the other end of the table without running into the four ball. Yes, Ivan. Fetter did lose the, to uh, – I can't even say the guy's name in the Philippines. Fetter said it was the best. Look at this shot. Fetter said it was the best set that he had ever played in his life and lost. No way. Bossif. Um, Makaibut? Yeah. It, it, when Fetter went and played in the Philippines with the Sharks. Yeah. Fetter said it was unbelievable. He'd never seen anything like it. It was the best set that he ever played in his life and he lost. Wow. I need to go back and watch that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool thing they're doing in the Philippines with the the shark stuff. They're keeping everybody in action. And, yeah. And that listen, that whole entire thing, Collins. You know what it's built on? Gambling. That's it. Yep. All the players are making money off of the gambling. They're getting paid appearance fees to go and the people that are paying them are making money off of the gambling side of it right 18 to 15 is the score so Fetter better make a move the god only needs three racks to close this one out it's looking pretty dire from here I'm going to be honest it's going to be tough but yeah well let's look at the beginning of the set was when he was playing and, and getting the best results right in the very beginning and at one point he was up seven to three, right? I think it was seven to three or seven to four, yeah. So I think it's, no, it was seven to three. It was seven to three. It yeah, was. it's within possibility. Like literally, just barely within possibility, uh, based on what we've seen so far. He would have to repeat that performance in order to win. Uh, is he going to get a look at the deuce here? Has a look, uh, but it's a not bank. a good look, yeah. Yeah, he's and got the, a bank, but no shape on yeah, the Yeah, the three. three's on the other end of the table. This is the problem with playing the god. Yeah, he's looking around like, what the heck do I even do here? He's looking. He's going to have to. The only chance he's going to have here is to cut this ball on the side and go around, you know, four rails for the three. It's the only chance of working the cue ball up the table. So he's got to take on an extremely tough cut shot into the into the left-hand side pocket. At speed. At speed. Yeah. Four and a quarter inch side pocket. The only chance I have the here, corners. the only chance I have here is if I bank the two back at the nine at about a million miles an hour and pray to God. <laughs> pray to the nine ball God. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not in love with the cut, but I don't see anything else yeah. um, that gives him an opportunity to work the cue ball up toward the three, which is in the bottom of the table here you see it the red three ball he's got it i mean he's got to shoot the cut shot on the side but very very low percentage especially if he's looking to jack up he's looking like he's potentially got to jack up to maybe miss the seven ball oh yeah now he's looking at now he's looking to see if he can maybe bank it in the corner it's not a terrible idea the corner up near the four? Yeah. yeah. Top right. Yeah. Just super short. Yeah. 
So tough. Now the god needs two. Yeah, if you're out there tuning in, please support what Fetter's trying to do here and make sure that you like and subscribe to the stream. Oh, yeah. Let us uh, let me show a couple things on here uh, he's going to be doing soon. Uh, Rax, right? He's going out to Rax. Hello. That's huge. He's going out to Rax this coming week, right? <laughs> September. Yeah, he's, going to, he's, he's leaving for Rax on Tuesday. Watch out, cue ball. Yeah, she needs a big bounce here. All right. Here, I'm going to zoom in for all you guys at home uh, on the details down here. 10000 added September 14th through 17th at Rax Village. $400 uh, is the entry fee. So that should be a pretty decent prize fund if they get it. Do you know if it's a full field or not? Yeah, I think everybody's going to be there. I think it's going to be just, you know, all the people that are going to the U.S. Open. Nice. I know it's a... Um, I know the, the Taiwanese are going to be there. Um, I think it's going to be a stacked field. That will be really cool to tune into. After we watch this shot, too, I want to look at one more thing. Big shot here. Dead perfect stroke. Ooh. So good. So good. Are you kidding me? I normally don't get excited about shots, but that was a nice one there. That is happening on AZB TV, looks like. Yeah, that's Upstate Al again. I, I was really happy. I'll tell you what, I was really happy to see that Upstate Al went away from pay per view. Yes. That's sweet that he's doing that. Um, and you know the other the the other really cool thing is, is Upstate Al. Th this is something that's really cool, Collins, and I think you'll appreciate this because okay. I know you stream as well. So I, I feel like a lot of the streamers that charge pay-per-views and different things, they're always at odds with each other. They're always arguing. Yeah. They don't, they're like coming up to Fetter telling him not to stream his yeah. match because they're charging nineteen ninety nine on a table 14 tables away. And yep. they get all pissed off about it and they can't see the big picture. Yep. If, if he is streaming his match live and you're not streaming it as a pay-per-view streamer, yep. he's helping your stream. Exactly. Because there's... There's a point in the tournament where he's going to go to a table and he's not going to stream his match. Exactly. And they're going to come pay $7 or whatever it is you're trying to charge somebody. It's like literally stream. advertising for your pay-per-view like, stream they, <laughs> and you don't want him to stream. That's, I, I guess that's how you end up working out of a minivan, traveling around city to city trying to make a living. Like, yeah. Because you just can't grasp something so simple. Well, well here's but the it, reality, Jason, is, is if we can get this game to grow to the point where well let's be real where it deserves to be because it's such a beautiful game like objectively it's such a good game uh oh, if it yeah. can grow to the point where it has as many eyes as it deserves all those people won't need to do pay-per-view and they'll still right. make plenty of money <laughs> they'll make way more wow. than they are now and it's just like i i think it's so silly to just want to take 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 right now and not let it get to the point where everyone can can have you know the the type of exposure that they they deserve in the future, but yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, but even short term, I think it helps them. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but I don't even think I don't even think they they can, you know, grasp that. I think if if Fetter goes around to every tournament and he goes live on this YouTube channel that everybody's tuning in right now. Yeah, we have a thousand people, people watching. Are watch. Yeah. More people are going to watch. They're going to consistently watch him play. And then his his following, I mean, all the great shots we've watched him do today, more and more people are going to watch him. Right. And then when he goes to the pay-per-view table, people are going to buy the pay-per-view to continue supporting him and continue watching him. So. Yep, exactly. Oh, I see Pancake out there. Here goes Sean Santoro. Let's break here, but I don't think What'd he's going to What did you call him? What was his nickname? Pancake? Ball. Pancake. Okay. I'm not, not going to tell you why. I want to know so bad. And so there's about a probably about a thousand other people that want to know but you don't have to tell Pan us. pancake <laughs> if you're out there tell everybody in the chat how you get the name <laughs> does he have a look at this too or is he gonna have to jump the edge here no i think you can Oops. see it i think you can see it 
It's really close, but I'm pretty sure he's got a good angle to get to the three, and he can see the ball. He's got his full cue out. All right, so maybe he's going to just – no, he's not even going to spin it. He's just got it. Yeah, he can see the whole ball, yeah. Pretty easy layout. This is a nice one here. If he can get a couple more breaks like that, might make it interesting. <laughs> What's up, QT time? <laughs> QT time. No, he's not going to try again tonight if he loses. But no. I Why like are you going between is. these balls? Oh, my gosh. That was he's trying to open it up. Someone in the chat says, I think Lucas Verner will be ready for USA team sooner than you think. He just beat more tees, almost 800 Fargo for cash a couple days ago. Dude, consistent results in majors. And I certainly think he can get to that point because he has all the fundamentals and he's, he's showing like a, a game sense that can get there. But it's consistent results in majors. Ooh, a little wobble there. Oh, Q time. No. Like Q time. Got gotcha. you. Not QT time. Thank you. <laughs> so here's a good question for you, Collins. If All I right. could tell you, you have the ability to be a, a world champion or uh, the best gambler. What would you pick? Which game? If all games made the same amount of money... In, but you you still have to pick a game. If I if it was one pocket, I'd pick the best gambler because I feel like that side of the game is so so interesting. But if it was nine ball, I'd pick world champion. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm I've recently become obsessed with one pocket, but it's a completely different uh, world, in my opinion. Currently speaking. Yeah, I mean, one pocket, honestly, to tell you the truth, I, after watching a ton of pool, I'm not really interested in nine ball. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like, what I really like watching is the, the moving aspect of it. What yeah. I do like about nine ball is like the U.S. Open, the Moscone Cup. I like watching the pressure situations to see how people are going to react. That's what I really like yeah. about pool, is just seeing how, how different people respond in different situations. I think it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's not so much the nine ball game that I like. It's the you know the clutch watching. moment, the big moment, yeah. high pressure. You know, can you get can. can you get lucky almost like uh, that you're able to be the one to make the big shot? But I could watch. Um, I could watch one pocket all day. All day, dude. Playing all for five hundred a rack, I could just sit there and watch all day. I know. I love it. A year ago, if you asked me this question, completely different answer. Um, and my opinion on One Pocket a year ago, which I had already started streaming, but I hadn't streamed so much One Pocket, um, completely different answer. But it, that game is, it's ridiculous. It seriously makes playing, well, I think my opinion might be different if I could execute perfectly like these guys all the time. It would be much more fun to play 9-ball and 10-ball and, you know, these other games. If I knew I was going to get out, <laughs> but I just know I'm not going to run out. So one pocket is, is so much more interesting because when you break 10 ball or nine ball or whatever, everyone knows what the next five shots are going to be. You know, right. everyone who plays the game and knows the game well knows what the next five shots are going to be almost every time. And there's a few question marks. Oh yeah. Okay. We've seen that the, we see that the two to the three right there was the only tough shot because the seven was slightly covering the three or whatever. Right. But then one pocket, it's like, I mean, yeah, we know probably what the next two shots are going to be, but the subtleties are everything, you know? So it's like every single shot is a new opportunity and will probably be, probably be played different by, you know, three or four different players. And uh, it's just such a, such a more beautiful game, I think. 
Yeah, I agree. There's no like perfect answer to it either, you right. know. Everyone always says, "Oh, that was the shot." And it's like, "Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Like that was the highest percentage shot for the most amount of people on the planet." But <laughs> Everyone's seen Alex play. Everyone's seen Fetter play. You know, it's like sometimes it's not the shot, you know. That's the coolest part about that game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Fetter's got a, a tough one here, doesn't he? This shot right here? I think he's... I mean, you pull the cue ball back about three or four inches. Oh, we went forward even better. Great, because I draw the ball too much. I'm a fish. Probably going to be slightly delayed from you now, Collins. Um, something's going on with the stream again for me. Mm. Holy puncherino. Don't get him straight in. Little head shake because he's straight, but the eight does go in the side. The side's a little tight from where the eight's sitting, but if he can get a decent... It looks like he is queuing low. What's he trying to do here? Oh, he's yeah, just punching well, up around the eight ball. God is getting nervous, that's for sure. Closing it. There you have it, 19 to 18. I wish they would play more eight ball. You know, my appreciation for eight ball has certainly uh, grown as I've appreciated the moving side of one pocket more. And I look at eight ball completely differently than I did, you know, two years ago, three years ago. I think eight ball is a much better game on the bar table. Oh, yeah, I could, yeah. A little bit more uh, intricacies, a little bit more uh, sensitive cue ball position, right? Yeah, for the pro, for the pros especially on yeah. a, on a big table, it's just a break and I mean, run fest. Get, yeah, I mean it's just all about the break. Do you make a ball on the break? I mean that's it on a big table. There's really not a lot of clusters, um, and it, it's a pretty simple game for the pros on the big table where it's a little tougher. You usually had to break out some balls and, you know, yeah. get at least in a couple tight windows at each rack. Oh, 19 to 18. Ooh, has he got a shot here? Oh, slap on the thigh tells me no. And it looks like... Well, he grabbed his playing cue. Is he going to have to swerve here because he can't reach the jump? Just pull out the double bridge jump shot. The double bridge jump shot. That is fun. He's got the short stick, I think. Is that the short stick? No, it isn't. This is, yeah, this is going to be really tough to jump here. Like you said, he's going to have to get the bridge out, I believe. Yeah, it isn't, it isn't the jump stick. He's got his brake stick in his hand. Maybe he's only got to get over the edge of the six. And he's going yeah, to try I mean, and just... do like a semi, like a half jump with draw. So tough to reach. Yeah, maybe even tougher to mass A. Look how comfortable he looks. He looks like he's doing yoga right now. So dumb. So dumb. Oh my god.
We're looking at a chance here, boys. We're looking at a little chance here. Back with you, Colin. There Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Let me get your camera back on here. Boom. And going through my phones, losing power here. By the way, Jason, he's already by a fair amount outrun your uh, early prediction of five to yeah, seven I mean, the he's, dog. He's he's broke the balls very well. He's, I mean, as tight as it's tight as tough as this table is, he's played played you know pretty good. Pretty. No, he's missed a few balls. Yeah, he's but played. Damn. he's played pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, I want to shout out to a few of these people that have subscribed recently. We've got uh, Eamon Owen, Fam Van Thang, uh, Jason Blaze, Hi Dow, Ivan Ragnarok. Hell of a name there. If your last name is really Ragnarok, I feel like everyone in the chat is jealous of you. Uh, Yusuf. Agung N, thank you guys all for subscribing. There's like about 50 more of you. Thank you guys all for clicking that subscribe button. Yeah, and if you haven't, go out there and do it. Hit subscribe. Support Fetter, what he's trying to build here. Doesn't cost you a thing to subscribe or like his video. Big punch shot here. This is a, this makes a pocket pretty small. The good news is he's at a good angle. Where he's shooting into a bigger oh pocket. My God. <laughs> Look at him grab his chest. He just barely gets. <laughs> nice, dude. Tie game at 19 apiece. How about that? The suspense. Hey, big shout out to Marty Smalls trying to get more likes in the chat. Yeah, 500, thanks, Marty. 502 likes. Thank you guys all for uh, for clicking those buttons. I think it's helping us that the Cowboys and the Giants is a blowout. So people yeah. are turning off the football coming in here to watch some pool. Watch some pool, exactly, yeah. All right, this is the pressure pressure situation we're talking about. Race the two for all the cheese here, Collins. Fed or pressure? Were you at uh, in Vegas for the Moscone last year? No, I didn't oh, you know. Didn't. Oh my god, the atmosphere in that room was unbelievable. All right, so he's got to look at the two. Does he have any way of getting over and running into the three? That's the key. I actually don't even he, think he needs to run into the ball. I think if he misses the five, he can float the cue ball. It's got that angle where the cue balls, like the two ball speed that's required to get the two ball to the corner, you can float the cue ball and really hold it on that rail, I think, from here. Or he could spin it with outside and nudge the five, maybe. Yeah, maybe try to run into the five. Yeah, rail first and then into the five. I think you're right. At first I looked at it, it looked like he was thinner. But I think you're right. I think he can just drift right over there. Real soft, yeah. Easy, easy. Perfect. Oh my God, I think he has a shot. What's the next ball he needs? The four on the other side of the table. Is that, that may be the problem. He if, he can, power, if he can see this ball, yeah, off the five, actually, I think. If he can see the ball, he, he's he got to clip the five to get back across the table. I'm sorry, yeah, the five. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah just draw right back into the to the right side of the five ball. He's taking some deep breaths right now. He's really, really putting in some effort oh. here to get out. I mean, he's got to do it on one leg. Don't be looking at his butt out there, ladies. He's got this sweat, yeah. sweat suit on for you. Oh, no. <laughs> He shorted it. 
Uh, the good news is the five's laying over the side, so he can if he can bank this ball, which I think he is going to take on the bank, as opposed to the cut. If he banks the ball. He doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball. The five's available. He's looking like he's going to. I don't mean to be drawled. I don't mean to jinx it, but the sickest part is if this bank doesn't go, all it takes is a dry break to lose. Yeah. It's kind of brutal you got put in that situation there. Super brutal. Oh, he's drawing it. All right, so he's going to try to maybe play the five in the same pocket. Yeah. Oh, he even got a fluke. Oh, he fluked the one in and he, scratched. He scratched and then got the fluke. All right, so the god is on the hill. Better needs two. The god needs one. It's for all the cheese. Hey, thanks for the heads up, Yellow McSwagon. Cool, cool handle, by the way, Yellow McSwagon. Uh, says the, the subscribe sound is a little loud, louder than all the other audio sources. We'll, we'll tweak that for the next stream. Thanks for the heads up. Does it still do the little minion thing? Yeah, yeah. Like that. All right, here we go. This is what we've all been waiting for here. Could be decided right here. One, We could be one shot away if he didn't jinx it. I know. It's so tough, too, to break when you're, when you're trying this hard, and now all of a sudden you've got one more mistake. One ball down. Ooh, what's the two ball going to do? No shot. Can't see. Get out of the way. Fred. No oh, shot. Stone hook. He's dead. We should give him the hand span for one shot. Give him the hand span. <laughs> Just on. give him the hand span for one shot. Put it down there. He's done. Look, yeah, he's one. <laughs> I think he wants the hand span. I mean, he could have the pinky span. He says it's Just move it. He says this is punishment for the last rack. Oh, man. All right, well, we're going to get to see a nice hard kick shot here. Fluke this one in the side. He's going to kick two rails at it, right? He's going to he's got to kick two rails at it, give himself a chance to make it in the side. Here's the other thing. There's the, that other ball's hanging in the corner up there in the top left. So the cue ball could travel up to the top left if he makes a good hit toward the... Yeah, no, uh, good. no dice. That's that. Well, well, you might what? get a little interview here. Yeah, we are going to get an this. interview. I think he's coming up to the Skype camera right now. Let me turn my music off. Music off. We'll come back over here. Skype is up. He's rubbing his face right now. There he is. Uh, I'm on dead tilt. Yeah. What happened with that, that the draw shot stretching out, trying to draw off the side of the five? Oh, yeah, I mean, I hit the seven ball on the way. I mean, it was tough to reach. And I mean, I could have played it with extension maybe, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't think I would hit the right side of the ball. I mean, the mistake was on the two ball. I just, I just overran the ball a little bit. I was trying to be on the left side, but the angle was quite big, and I was trying to kill the ball and hit it a little bit too hard. Fetter, you shot too fast there on that last rack. We were trying to get your attention to give you the hand span. We were gonna, we were gonna let you have the hand span on one shot, and that was it. <laughs> but you went ahead and kicked at it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> God. Uh, how Donny Mills would say, there's a player on tilt, table number one. <laughs> player on <laughs> tilt, number one. You, hey, so uh, how, how good did you break the balls? The whole thing, you broke fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's surreal that I lost, honestly. I mean, I played my B game, maybe even C game, and uh, lost uh, by two games. The beginning, the beginning of the set, the first nine racks, I honestly should have ran every one of them and made 
kind of easy mistakes. And uh, then the God punished me with a few dry breaks and a few bad layouts. And I, I think I was up like seven to three and ended up being down like seven to 10. Yeah. Um, but then I had, I mean, I had good runs, a couple of packages to, I mean, two or three times I ran two, three wrecks in a row. But I mean, I'm breaking decent. Sometimes there was like two or three times I didn't know what to do with the two balls. So I would just went ahead and uh, just smacked at it and kind of thought that something would fall in, but uh, nothing. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I should, I should have won today. So it's, it's uh, frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think you broke, you broke, um, you got to give yourself a 10 out of 10 breaking the balls though. I mean, you, you deposited the one ball, but how many racks did you play? You only broke dry twice, right? You made the one three every times. other time. Okay. Three times I broke dry out of 40 racks. So 37 times I made the one. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty successful there. And you had a look at the, like you said, the first 10 racks, you had a look at the two ball every rack. Um, so you know if you're out right, there at the right, U.S. Right. Open, I mean it, you're out there at the U.S. Open. It doesn't have to be all offensive, especially if you get a nice look at the two. You're going to get an opportunity to uh, kind of control the table there. So, I mean, you did. I, I think you say you play your C game. I, I don't know, maybe maybe your B game. Let, let's put it this In way: between B and C, yeah. Let's put it this way: you asked uh, before we went live, we were having a discussion and Fetter said, should we do something where like, maybe we make it slightly easier. And if I break and, and don't have a shot and I play safe and I get a full hook, then I can re break without changing the score. And with that being said, I think hands down, there's no question with the way you were breaking, you would have won that set. Oh, he would have robbed that. Yeah. 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 But I mean, for the stream, I think it would take at least, 30 minutes or more i mean it's going to be a longer stream and sometimes i can have like uh, i mean it's uh it's going to be a lot of arguing about it because i can i can for example i can try to make the ball and miss it and hook and then i don't right. know i think you've got I to play the way, it the way you played it but yeah. you just got to play right, it. Right, you just right. got to Better, you just gotta play better, man. Yeah, come, come on, on. play doing? better. Gotta, what are you trying? Hey, just know, bear down. Win. Why didn't you just bear down and get out? <laughs> you you jumped Honestly, like Collins. It's, it's, I know, <laughs> I did. The 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 rack number. It was a somewhere in the beginning where I missed the two ball. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I was I was jumping decent. I mean, I made some jump shots. That wreck, when it was 1918, I got so frustrated that the, the, it was the ball, always the last ball rolling, like blocks the two ball mm -hmm. by like one tenth of an inch. It, like, it's so frustrating. But uh, I made the jump and ran out there. I can't believe <laughs> that. I mean, if I, if I run out at 1919, I win. Yeah. But uh, whatever. I mean, it's. Uh, Good practice, and uh, that's the way we should play. And uh, I mean, that's it. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for letting me watch, man. It's always a pleasure. And Jason, pleasure to meet oh, you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. pleasure thanks to meet you, guys. Pete Collins. Had a lot of fun. We'll have to do it again. Fetter, when are you going to try to do it again? When are you going to try to beat it again? All the, everybody in the chat's trying to figure out. They want you to do it again right now. Me and Collins are trying to go to bed. <laughs> I'm sweating. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to go to bed too. I may go to the sauna and then go to bed. Yeah. Uh, well, we may do it before I fly to New York one more time because I like this practice. I mean, it's a good practice. It it also puts some pressure on me whenever it's tight or I'm up. I'm thinking like, oh, I can't, I can't lose now. And then suddenly I'm losing seven games in like five minutes, and I'm down, and it's uh, mind blowing. Yeah. So it's good practice. Well, either way, uh, we could do it, you know, before or after your next event. That next event, I've just put it up on screen, by the way. You're going out to uh, Rax, right? Rax in New York. Yeah, that's a Metrum ranking event. Same format as we used today with my friend Nine Ball God. And then uh, I'm flying back from there. 
and the next day I'm going to Michigan for the Predator 10 ball event. From there, I'm going to US Open. So it's going to be a tight schedule. Super That's why we probably, if we want, if we want to do it, we'll have to do it before that event in New York. And I think it will be a good practice. Sure. Well, I'm game as but long as I, did, as, long I, as did, I got the time of I day. Did better yeah. than last time. Yeah. I did it better. You did way time. better last than last time. time. Last, yeah, it was like twenty-one to twelve or thirteen or something. Yeah, I lost by eight games, and the table was playing a little bit easier. Maybe it was playing the same. I mean, uh, today I made some good shots. Honestly, like uh, I, I did come with some shots. I'm, I missed some hard ones too, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way I played. It's yeah. okay. Well, you put on. We're a just good gonna show. have to do a race, race to seven next time. You might have a chance. Yeah, race to race to race to seven. <laughs> we just play until I win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, see, Collins, this is how we do it. I keep him humble by busting his balls. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. I love I can't it. Let his he- I can't let his head get too big. He's got to be able to walk in and out of the door. <laughs> hey, yeah. well, uh, one last thing. Big shout out to uh, Benji the Bobcat for the twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much for the support. And another two dollars coming in right now says. Uh, he says, I'm in the Derby City. He's going to the Derby City this year. Hope we get to play, he says. but he Sweet. Should. I hope so, too. Yeah. Thanks, Benji. And thank you, the guy that goes to Derby. We'll see you there. Yeah, yeah, Fetter's hungry. He needs some protein shakes, so send him 20 bucks so he can go up to Sam's and get him some of that chocolate or banana cream protein shake so he can get a little thicker. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, actually, I gained some, more some power. weight. I don't know if you all if you, if you are noticed, but. Flex for the camera. Let's some see it. Let's muscle. see it. Pull the, put the, All that put the muscle. Biceps up. Put the, let's see I'm it. Not, Pull your shirt. If he puts his bicep up, day. I'm going to throw that on a let's T-shirt. See. Boom. <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Oh, my God. Nice, dude. Hide your wife. I'm not Donnie Mills yet, but yeah. I'm getting in there. Donnie Mills. Yeah. Man. All right, cool. Well, hey, guys, That's I'm going gonna, gonna to hit the road. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Right, We had like uh, almost 1,300 people watching at one point, so glad you guys enjoyed it. And thanks for the show, Fetter. Thanks for the chat, Jason. Yeah. We'll yeah, see you guys. Was some good pull today. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you guys.